Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting for July 10th, 7 o'clock at the Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street. Our agenda tonight is a call to order. Minutes of the previous meeting will take any public comment. It might be out there. We have some old business, which involves the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments agreement for provision of support services, uh, discussion of housing and affordable senior housing, uh, review of the resurfacing at uh, routes 5 and 10. And then new business is a uh, site plan review for 707 Greenfield Road, repairing, restoration, and sales of RVs. A second site plan review for construction of a self-storage facility at 247 Greenfield Road. And then any other business not reasonably anticipated, 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. Then we'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Any additions, changes, edits to the agenda? I, um, I actually propose we switch old business and new business because I think there's a lot of people present for new business and not as many people for old You want to do the minutes now or you want to? Yeah, let's do the, do the minutes from the, um, from the June, June 5th was our last meeting? Yes. Agenda, and we're reviewing the minutes right now. Okay. Um, and you were there, so that. So the first sentence there, the, t the date, needs to be... Uh, the date's wrong. Well, it should say June 5th, 2017. Oh, yeah. So we got the date. How did it get 16? The 5 and is missing and the, and the yeah, right. 17. Yeah, correct it. Yep. Otherwise, that's... Uh, I don't know how it got out of there like that. But. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, it's two feathers and design. Remember the thing, we, we used the word, we executed the, um, the covenant and the easement. And here we said the, then four board members signed the covenant. Yeah, that was a point made, but I think. But there was two different one. items. One was the covenant and one was the easement. I think there was only one thing we voted on that was. Well, we didn't vote on anything. All we needed to do was, was uh, sign the covenant. Yeah. Remember, that was the, okay. That was the All right, we can, we let's, that let's change that. Yeah. So I would just say that uh, and four board members executed and signed the covenant and easement. Okay. I think that, that, that last sentence could be, that'd be fine. Then the board. Uh, execu assigned and executed, is that what you're saying? Yeah, or executed and signed, I guess. Executed and first. signed. The covenant and road easement. You want to leave out the four, you mean, too? Or? No, you should put, no, the four, four. Just add the executed yeah. and signed. Okay, got it. And then add, sign the covenant and road easement. You didn't sign, did you sign it? Two different. I don't think all four did. Thing. Oh, four, that way. Oh, four of the five. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. That's good. Okay. That's all they needed. Yep, 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 yep. See, I didn't think that four. we had to sign the road easement. We did? Well, we executed it. I, I think that that's them granting it to the town. I don't think we have to vote on it. 
I didn't think we voted right, on it. All right, but then I, I... I mean, if anybody else thinks we voted right. on it, that's fine. Uh, I'll put it in. You, so we only signed one document, you think? I think we only signed one document right. was the covenant. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. All right. We'll leave it out. He gave, they gave us two other things, was the road easement for the town and then a, uh, a, a schedule of events for right. the buildings, for the, not building, but, but that already for had. our inspector, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Rachel just saw the Two Feathers Restoration and Design. You're missing an S there on design. Just because it's the name. Uh, Designs with the plural, okay. No, no, the no. S, D, E, S. D, E, S, not E, E. This is spelled. Oh, right. yeah, right, okay. Gotcha. Bell check wouldn't catch Dane. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't work. Yeah. Dane. Yeah. Uh, Dane. Anything else anybody see? Otherwise, uh, no. I make a motion we accept the minutes with the changes. Second the motion. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? 5 0 0. Uh, we, I would like to see if there's any public comment. This is the time that if anybody has um, something that's not on the agenda but would like to bring it to the attention of the planning board, we can always take a couple minutes at the beginning of the meeting. So anybody in the public that has anything to say about anything that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move right on. So we're switching old business and new business. So first new business, uh, 707 Greenfield Road, site plan review for a new business. Repairing, restoration, and sales of RVs. So we met you guys, or started to have this discussion last week, last month. Yep. Yes. And then we decided that a site plan review was in order. Yep. So yep. that's great. And who's your third person here today? This is Bill Sruta's son, who's doing our septic. Okay. Do you have a card? Do you have a business card? card? Um, actually, I can get one after the meeting. Okay. Sure. I Thank have you. some yep. out in the car. Let me uh, pass this around and you can sign this so yep. we know. Sure, sure. Do you have a card for me or do you need another card? I, I got a card for you last okay, time. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I should have said we also have a quorum here and because we have great name tags. Max, Rachel, John, Kip, and Paul are all here. So if you could introduce yourselves and then tell us something about your, your project, please. So my name is Christy Bodine. I'm uh, the attorney for, uh, for Brian Arthurton, representing Two Feathers Restoration and Design, LLC. Um, we've already received a special permit uh, from the zoning board for uh, work to uh, create an RV uh, repair and sales service. The criteria that triggered the site plan review uh, is that it's a change of use and there's outdoor retail. Um, it's commercial. This is interiors and fixtures only of the RVs. There's no painting, there's no mechanical repairs, there's no hazardous materials involved. Um, all the work will be done inside of the existing 2,559 square foot building or behind the fence. RV sales will be at the front of the lot. I believe we submitted plans to you that sort of show the layout of the, the area. Um, you know, Two Feathers will be, will, be, uh, will be operating the business. They're going to be installing septic and well. They'll need a building permit for the interior uh, modifications, replacement of uh, a concrete pad. In terms of disturbance of surface, the concrete pad that's in front of the building is going to be removed and replaced with a smaller one. Um, there's going to be some fencing put up. Um, we need to put a pad for the uh, yeah, we need to put a pad for the dumpster to, to sit on. Um, the special permit restrictions. I, do you have a copy of the special permit? I didn't. I probably should have included that in the packet, and I didn't. Um, the special permit includes conditions uh, to wit: all damaged vehicles must be out of sight inside the building or behind the fence. Uh, limited number of trailers for sale to 12 at any time. All signs must conform to town bylaws. Hours of operation 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days. The existing split rail fence, which is currently on Mass Highway property, will be located back to the applicant's property and be farther away from the road when it's replaced. 
There will be no parting out and no junk vehicles or trailers. Uh, any new owner must reapply to the ZBA for permission to sell uh, or repair trailers so that the permit is subject to review on change of ownership. Um, the, the special permit is subject to planning board site plan review, which is another reason that we're here. It's subject to conservation commission approval. I filed a request for determination um, to the CONSCOM. Um, we were going to try to have a joint hearing tonight, but that didn't happen. I don't have a date for that hearing. Um, he's going to need to trim some trees that are that are threatening to fall on the building. Um, my analysis of the site and the work that's being done, I don't think it's going to be subject to wetlands, but obviously the CONCOM will have to decide that. Um, conditions must be met before occupancy permit is granted. Any painting would be subject to Board of Health and DEP approval, and again, he's not really planning to do any painting. And the approval is based on a plan dated May 25th, 2017. So the special permit was um, uh, awarded or voted on, on June 1st, 2017, and it was, um, I don't have the recording date, but the special permit has been recorded in the, oh, it was yesterday, right? Or, no, no, no. What was the date you closed? Oh, the day we closed was last Friday. So the special permit was recorded last Friday in the, I don't have a problem. In the registry date. So the th I it was made available on the 30th, so the 30th made the 21st day from the time of the, si the decision. Do you want a copy of the special permit? I have one that I can. You have a copy I won't be able to refer back to it anymore. But leave it, leave it. No, we'll, we'll, okay. I mean, we'll get it. I just don't have it anymore. Okay. So um, I guess we're here to address any questions that you might have or concerns that you might have about the project. All right. Thank you. I should have actually led this off with a uh, announcement that this is actually a public hearing. Okay, it's not listed as such on our agenda, but in fact it was posted in the uh, yeah, it was advertised. public. It's on the town hall bulletin yep. board and it's been in the newspaper so let me read correct um, notice of public hearing the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on July 10th 2017 at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices 8 Conway Street on the request of Two Feathers Restoration and Design LLC for a site plan review for a property at 707 Greenfield Road assessors map 20 lot 31 on which to operate a business for repairing, restoration, and sales of RVs, parentheses, campers. Site plans are available for inspection at the town offices during normal business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. So that was um, done, and neighbors received notice, and I have By certified mail, I have certified mail receipts. Um, I don't see I right the, now the list of I all the, the abutters, but you have the abutters yeah. list. So that should be in the file too. Um, but we can get John, it. my son is an abutter to this property. Thank you for. Yeah, Bricketts is on that list. Thank you for making that public. I don't know whether I need to recuse or not, but... Uh, so I think the question is that you've, you've made that information public. Yep. Whether you whether there's a conflict of interest, I don't know what the determination is on that. I don't... Yeah, I don't either. I think it necessarily warrants it. No, okay. Just so, just so it's clear. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have any... I don't see any problem with it. I know Brickett, so it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Is that, one of the, was that one of the questions on the ethics test? <laughs> that we've all well, we're using some of the same contractors, so. <laughs> so I'll tell you what we do have is um, we have a site plan review application. It was received by the town, stamped, and this one does not say paid. The other one. The check cleared my bank account, and it came out. Yep, then the, the other form that went to the clerk. Um, <laughs> Hmm. Okay, there it is, paid. 
Yeah. And we have a check number. All right. Two hundred and fifty dollars. So that's um. That's our standard site plan. The um, double check. Um. Two feathers restoration. So property owner, and now you just recently purchased it, is that? Right, yes. so we closed on Friday. It's Two Feathers Properties, LLC. That is now the official owner of the property through Greenfield Savings as a financier. Because the application says the property owner is Michael. That's that is prior to that creation yeah. of the LLC for the sole purpose, and that was pointed out before we applied. So you guys were aware of that. My parents and myself are the principals of that LLC. All right, so we should, um, so we'll just have to make sure there's a note on the site plan review application that the ownership is. Sure. Right. And what was the name of the LLC again? Two Feathers, as one word, Properties, okay. LLC. Yeah. Okay. No hyphen, just one word. Just one word. So the proposed use commercial parking lot outdoor retail. Um, so the description is RV repair and restoration, interiors and fixtures only, no mechanical repair or body work. Inside the existing 2,559 square foot building or behind fence storage. RV sales will be at the front of lot area as shown in the plan designated area. This is a change of use. Two feathers restoration and design will operate the business. To clarify on the body work, we're talking regular style of automotive style. So if it's a typical RV wall, Yes, we will do repairs of that. So just to be clarifying on that. So that way it's not a misrepresentation of. So you just want to separate it from an auto body or a mechanic yes. shop? Yes, yes. Right. If we need to do any kind of repair like that, we'll contract out. Um, Creates too much dust. <laughs> all right, so again, on this special permit application pending, so now that's been, that's that's been approved. approved. Yeah. Correct. We would actually, actually at this time, I could ask uh, Pat Smith from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments maybe to come up. So Pat Smith from the Council of Governments is our uh, helps us with site plan reviews and other sure. things that potentially are, are tricky and knows the rules very well. So, <laughs> Good evening. Thank Great you, to see everybody. Pat, for being here. <laughs> Um, I have, you know, to date not seen any of the materials relating to this project, so I'm writing completely blind. I will be getting <laughs> copies of all of that from the uh, town administrators shortly, I hope, by the end of the week. Um, one question that comes immediately to mind is the uh, square footage of disturbed area. Sure. Do you um, have that information on that application? Yeah, we just did a ballpark of... 11,000 feet or less. Yeah, 11,000 or less, because there's pre-existing pavement that's crumpled, and we want to, you know, dress the place up and right. fix that. In some places where it's crumpled, we're just going to go with, you know, like a crushed stone or something of that nature, so it's still pervious. Um, the sales area is a grass area and staying grass at this time. Okay. And you guys know that I'm asking that because that is the trigger for the stormwater right. permit. So right. I assume Correct. When you reviewed this in the last month, you probably reviewed that question as yeah. well. So it's underneath that threshold yeah, that right. was determined. I did that analysis through the, through the bylaw to, to make sure good. That that's good to hear. That wouldn't be triggered. Yeah. So, um, or if it were triggered, that I knew about. It. <laughs> right. right. So it, you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, we'll have to determine if you're going to request under our contract that we're hoping to sign shortly my services on providing a review of this project, uh, and if so, how you want to structure that in terms of whether it's a peer review or a strict review under the technical assistance contract. That's, um, what, we'll, that's what we want to figure out tonight. So there's, a, to so there's a couple of steps. Yeah. You know, If we're going to do it as a peer review, then I need to review everything and give you an estimate of uh, what those review services would cost and then the applicant would have to submit a check in that amount before I could get to work. Right. So that would take a little, a, a few days typically for, for that to happen. So, so we weren't um, aware that there might be that additional Yeah, cost. we're told there was going to be no additional fees here. So that's 
that's a that surprise. was never disclosed to us. I thought, I thought you said you were aware. You, you no, said I was not aware that there might be a consultant. So we're, we're talking about the storm drain review process. We had already made sure that whatever we're doing is underneath that threshold, so it would not trigger so any additional right. we're costs. We're still talking site plan, site talking plan site review. review. And that, yeah. that's what we want to determine tonight. If this gets sure. more complicated than what wasn't us that, as volunteers can handle, then we often... Yeah. But again, that, that, that wasn't disclosed. That, that was, it would have been determined at the time we filed the application. No, no we don't know until we start to get into the review. You guys might want to fix things so it's a little more clear to us because no. we're not prepared for any additional fees at this time. Can't afford it. So I will, um, I will read some of the... We, had, we got requests uh, for comments from some other boards, so... Sure. Um, this one is from the Board of Selectmen, and June 28th, I think. The Select Board supports the business and the concerns of the Planning Board as described by Kip Camosa. Oh. Remember where they were? <laughs> yes. We'll get to, we'll get to the uh, Highway Superintendent. No. no. No action. So I guess something. And the um, well, the conservation commission said no comments at this time because they hadn't reviewed it yet. Is that all right? So that that is one thing that we often we like to do things with them so that we know if there is stuff that we're kind of both going to look at. We don't have to do it twice. Um, well, it's interesting because this was submitted when the when the ZBA application was submitted. It was reviewed by the Conscom. You know, and now it's being reviewed it by was them reviewed again. By the it, it, it was reviewed well, by the Conscom. It was a letter of comments. The, the ZBA application was circulated to all the town departments, and there were really no comments. But now we have to apply for request for determination to the right. Conscom. So it's this thing is it's been a very frustrating application process because the criteria have sort of shifted gears. You know, every well, I think the re re request for determination is pretty clear. You have to if, if there's potentially any wetlands there, you got to you got to ask for that directly to the CONCOM. Right. That's not a request for comment from the ZBA thing. That's a separate thing. So you should have, that should have been clear. So those are the three comments we got from uh, folks on the board. All right, does anybody um, have questions? So we've got, what, what's up? Is this, is this your? No, that has this nothing to do with a separate project. Okay. This, I'm, I'm here with two clients today. So. Oh, lucky. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, first off, I'll introduce myself. I'm, I'm Jonathan Saruta. I'm with Saruta Engineering. Um, I'm the project engineer for this project, but my involvement was limited, where um, I was involved in the septic design, but more importantly, the drainage design, and that's where it comes into play here. Mm -hmm. um, the site plans that I drafted were under the assumption that the uh, property would be held to the Massachusetts stormwater management standards, which means that we'd be required to treat 80% of the TSS uh, total suspended solids, so 80% TSS removal before it discharges into any neighboring wetland. <clears throat> um, the site doesn't have to meet the stormwater management, or it doesn't need a stormwater management report for the site because it's under the required square footage. Um, but I drafted the plans contingent on the board determining if they needed the 80% TSS removal. So. These plans just represent that. I drafted two options, um, one utilizing a water quality structure and one utilizing a oil, oil water separator. And that was you know, up to the client to decide what he would want to do, what would be more cost effective for that. Um, and that's basically the limit of my involvement in the project. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to at least introduce myself and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our goal is to get things approved and move them forward since we're ready to get open because the season's diminishing as we speak. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had them do plan A, plan B, if it was required <coughs> by you guys. So my understanding, it's not really, but it's up to you kind of thing. Well, our big concern there, and this is exactly why the review is, right. is complicated, is that would actually those concerns are more applicable to CONCOM. Right. right. And so that would have been nice if we could have sure. met on the same night, unfortunately. And, so and that kind of means that we're piggybacking the on CONCOM chose theirs. not to do that. Right. So. And so, and that's part of the reason that these reviews, we can't anticipate at the time of uh, submission because yeah. as they roll out and as you get closer to your goals, yeah. some of those details will change. And sure. um, for, for better and worse, afraid, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So that, that piece of it is important. And we're address. also addressing a drain that's been on the property for over 20 years. Exactly, yeah. And so, again, it's a known quantity, but is because of the site, the, the use change, it yep. triggers a review. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's bounced between usage yep. and its history. So at yep. one time, I guess there was heavy equipment and owned by Barlow Construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of bounced around a little. Mm -hmm. But not with that building there. Say right. again? Not with that Before building the, there. Mm -hmm. That building was construction right. 03, and that was what the owner I just purchased from. Right. Can you go over the Yes. Yeah, can you, actually, yes. Can you get one? Two, but that drain was in place before they built it. From yeah, what that, I gathered. That's the application. These, these are several site. These are all the same. Yeah. So is yep, this yep, a yep, single yep. page okay, site plan? Is that this is yep. the complete plan? Yeah, that's the existing conditions. All right. So Kip, you want to tell us the sure. The, the, the select board had a few uh, concerns, but um, I talked. We yes. spoke as a group, and we decided to leave. Um, our concerns up to the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. Yep. Uh, some of the concerns were, um, we know that you're going to leave that front area, all this grassy area, but just be aware that at some time, you know, you're there three years and you decide, you know what, I can't deal with the mud anymore and we want to blacktop it. You're going to be right back to square one. You oh, have well to aware do that. Okay. Yeah, yep. absolutely. The other thing is that this fence that you put up to erect, if you dismantle any campers and things like that, everything be kept out of sight behind the fence. And that's right. a condition of the special sure. permit. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. And the last thing was that uh, the drainage be dealt with. And I understand that's a conservation thing. But right. it's an issue because that pipe goes directly toward the wetland area. If there's a motor home, for say, and it should develop a leak of oil, it would be a direct flow right into it, not just seeping well, into the ground. Yeah, so I mean, those are things that... Our focus is trailers, not motor homes, but there could be that possibility mm -hmm. in the future. I, I know, but that's yeah. where they go. So that was our only concerns, and yeah. uh, the select yeah. board did leave it up to the planning board and conservation to deal with those issues. Yep. So, can you tell us about the fence here? So that you got a proposed eight foot high stockade fence. Yeah. So we proposed um, before ZBA, they kind of confirmed with us our same feelings was for not only security purposes but for eyesight purposes is that. Um, I was going to do a higher fence, but uh, our uh, building inspector here in town says it's eight foot sufficient. So we went with the eight foot fence. It'd be a stockade. I'm going to get a rough saw cut type wood um, to go up along there. And that will provide two gates, one on the north side of the building, one on the south side. The south side's where the storage would actually be. Um, north side's where the dumpster will be located behind the fence. Uh, gives us a storage space as well as employee parking area. Um, so it will, uh, on the north side of the building, uh, it'll uh, kind of wrap around on the property line, so kind of an L shape, if you will. Towards the back there, you'll see there is a description of some hedges. Um, that's where the fence will stop. It will then convert into, later point, uh, will convert into a chain link fence, which is depicted on that plan. Uh, the chain link's not in the initial project scope right at the moment. We'll see what we have left for funds. but. We are putting the stockade both north side and south side um, before we can get an occupancy permit. That's what was agreed upon. So that fence is flush with the front of the building? Pretty On the, the south the side, building. correct. The north side, not so much. You have a variance, uh, which we hope to be adjusted. But for now, it is depicted um, a straight line from the 120 foot from the front property line. So that'll be jagged a little bit on the north side. So there's an employee parking in the, employee parking in the back, and then where's the customer? So up front, you have next to the road depicted two parking spots for smaller cars that can be either employee or customer. Then you have two parking spots depicted for a 40-foot RV, which uh, the building inspector recommended, which was a great idea. Uh, then directly in front of the building, you have four parking spots, one of which is a handicap accessible parking spot designated. Got it. This is that this is in the uh, C2 district and zoning requirements, the minimum size lot is 60,000 square feet, not 30,000. And it says that they have 45,000. Say that again, Kip, I'm sorry. 
in the C2 area, the minimum size lot is 60,000 square feet. Pretty sure that is. But you got your book, you can look at I got my book. I don't know if that's just. According to the plan, the minimum zoning report, lot size allowed is 30,000 square feet. This is 45,410. I, I don't know why, but I think 60, I think it's 60,000. Well, but I could be mistaken. It's in zoning, I mean, the, the architect who drew the site plan did the analysis through okay. the zoning bylaws. So, so it looks like a uh, yeah. 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 And, and again, the. I mean, Eaton did the survey and did the plan, and they, they, they're pretty careful about that. This is all, um, it's all grass, all the parking spaces? So directly in front, where the customer area would be, as I'm, that's depicted there, would what grass is there, we would like to replace that section with like a gravel, some pervious surface there. Uh, about half of that space already has gravel and or old pavement that's kind of broken up. So we want to try to give a uniform feel. Um, being that the existing uh, approach to the building is, I don't know this how many feet out, let's say 30 feet or something, that's coming out. And so we have to um, flatten that area out anyhow. So it'd be nice to have like gravel approach to the building um, up to the new pad that will be replacing the existing. So okay. we're just trying to make uniformity now where your RV sales will be the 12 spaces. Those are going to stay grass because we're not going to always have 12 vehicles out there at this point. And in section 2320 of the zoning bylaw, the table of dimensional requirements, principal use C2 minimum lot size is 30,000 square feet. 30, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Stand correct. So our goal, is to right. our goal is to improve what's there. All right, so I just want to, maybe if we go through this a little quickly, just to make sure everything's here. So we, this, this is under 5430, section 5430 of the site right. plan review. I'm assuming that's what Eaton and Associates. 5640, right? Yeah, 50, 5400 50, 50, 50, 50, is. Uh, 5400, and then it's the middle is this 5430. Oh, 5430, okay. Um, so all boundary lines and information, I think. Uh, the contours are all the, those yep. are contours in the in the back there. Yes. Topography at two foot contour intervals, location of wetland streams, water bodies, drainage swales, areas subject to flooding and unique. All right. So you basically have that slope. So that's that's the main. And we sub I submitted a, a GIS showing the location of the wetlands. Yes, that's in the. The packet. packet. And then you've got existing and proposed buildings and structures, including fences, loading areas, accessory building signs, waste disposal areas, storage areas, proposed building elevations as renders, utilities, and snow disposal methods. So you've got the snow, winter snow to be piled over in this area. Um, so then we have to look at what the drainage is over there. I don't. Actually, if you look at the plan, there are contour lines. Um, yeah, they're very faint, but. In that area, it's going to be headed back towards that drain once the construction is completed. So there's the one drain right in the middle? There's the one drain on the property, correct. And I've been out there when it's rained and it handles it pretty well in those torrential downpours we've had yeah, at night, especially. Here. I think the last was yeah. the last meeting we had. We had torrential downpour. Or was that ZBA? I can't remember. No, it was but a ZBA here. We went right over there and we're like, okay, we're gonna look at the we video and let's see what it's work. doing. Let's see how the output's doing. And we're like, wow, it's holding it. So, yeah. So water provision is there? Uh, this is town water. Is it? There is none. We're installing septic and water. And well, the so well would be on your southwest corner of well, the property there. there. Right. It's in an approximation of where we hope it to go. <laughs> And then the septic is out in front. Yes. Yeah. And, dump station. and the tank will be adjusted per where that well resides. And dump station, what does that mean? Dump station, that was a provision that the ZBA 
requested, um, we really didn't plan on it, but it made sense, is if we were to bring in a trailer motor home, they all are self-contained. So what that means, they'll have a fresh water tank, a gray water tank, which is like your sink water, and then you have the black water tank, which is the feces and urine. If we had to work on one of those tanks, remove it for whatever reason, it gives us the opportunity to actually dispose of that. That also allows, if you yourself had owned a trailer and was looking to empty your tank, it allows you to come to us and as well dispose of that because um, that's not something you can do at your home. You have to bring it to a facility. So I guess that becomes a question then. Is this something you advertise? Is this something that It's not something we're going to advertise, no. But it's, it's pretty it's much a, a given anytime you go to an RV service center, uh, Diamond RV, anybody, you will have a dump station. You go to the north end of Greenfield, going into Bernston, there's a campground there, uh, for example. Uh, most campgrounds will have a dump station that they also charge is, for. You're not really open for the public. That's We're, just for your customers. This, is, this was recommended by the ZBA. Uh, oh, I think yeah. maybe it might have been Dick that actually brought it up at a ZBA meeting, and we're like, well, if we're putting in a tank, it's not that much more to put in a, sec you know, a secondary tube that actually feeds into that. Um, and it's a great idea. Now I don't have to drive to a campground or another uh, RV competitor to uh, relieve of that right. you know, refuse. But it's not, a, it's not a revenue stream for you? No, but I mean, if you came in and says, hey, do you have a dump station? Yeah, we'll let you use it. But, um, but it's not something we're going to advertise for. Well, I would because I'd have to dump it a lot more frequently. <laughs> no, I would. I mean, I don't think you're allowed to do that under your special permit. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, it, I don't think. No. I don't my know. impression was that I could. So no, not to the general public. Well, okay. Not, not as revenue stream. I've been stream. corrected. Not, not as revenue <laughs> stream. No, you can't. Yeah. You cannot let what? just anybody go. I guess I. Oh, I wasn't clear clear on it. Yeah. It was a. It, it was implied to me that to put it installed, and Dick had mentioned that you then you can charge people to dump if they need to dump. Well, not, not the general public. Only your customers. Okay. So. I've been clarified. <laughs> well, that leads Important. to another question. It would be to your engineer. Yeah. The, the septic design is usually in commercial design by occupancy load and stuff like Correct. that. So what would be the capacity of the system? And all of a sudden, you have 200 gallons from an RV being dumped into the system. I'd have to defer that to Bill Sabruta. Uh He was the chief engineer on this project who did the septic design. I did the drainage. So do you... And the tanks on these things are not that dramatic. Um, no, I, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, what we've uh, designed is we can turn to the department septic tank. The additional flow from the FDA one RVs will be insignificant. The septic system is designed to work with 310 CMR 15, so we've got to. It required him uh, for his operation real goal and it required uh, a minimum design for which is like three hundred times more than what he needs for building and carrying up. So just only because it's ridiculous. We have a minimum design for it. So yes, I understand, but I guess would how would we deal with limiting him to not allow a, b a bunch of RVs to come in. The, I mean, the special yeah. permit doesn't say he can do that. Okay. All right. And it would if it if, it, if you were allowed. It's my opinion. It doesn't say the special permit and also let members of the public come in and dump their tanks. So he can't allow that. It's only for use of his customers as if they're bringing a unit onto his property and it needs work and it needs to then and under those circumstances, yes, otherwise it's not allowed. That's yeah. I had a misunderstanding, apparently. <laughs> it avoids him having to take the trailer someplace else. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the capacity is built into the system. So. so the other part of the water is the, is the fire protection measures? Sure. What's the only thing uh, the fire chief asked for is a lockbox with a key. That's the only thing he had uh, concerning in that. Well, then if we were to have any flammables, Spray, spray cans or something of that nature um, that we have in a proper closet. But outside of that, there was no, no further statements made by him. The building's not sprinkled, I don't No, it's not required either. Yeah, it's not required. All right, and D, sanitary sewage. So we talked about that. So then storm drainage, including means of ultimate disposal and calculations to support maintenance of the requirement of the planning board subdivision rules and regulations. Yeah. So based on, and based on the my you know my analysis through the stormwater regulations, this is exempt from from the requirement to submit a stormwater plan. 
Right, so that's kind of what we just want to, all site plan reviews, we talk about storm drainage. Right. So that's what we want to talk about. And we're not saying anything about storm yeah. water yet. So can you just run that, run by us again, all the, because maybe help us with the slopes and the contours and things? So all the drainage goes to the single area drain that's on site. Um, I put a note in there if there was, you know, any sort of adjustment or if they needed to replace the uh, existing area drain if it's in poor condition. Per I personally haven't gone out there and inspect the condition of the area drain, but <coughs> assuming that everything's running properly, it goes to that single area drain where it discharges into the neighboring wetlands. Um, if the board deems it appropriate or uh, if you want to follow the stormwater management standards for the 80% TSS removal, needs some sort of intermediate stormwater BMP. So some sort of structural uh, treatment, which it, I thought would be appropriate would be a oil water separator because it's inexpensive and you're, you're getting the TSS removal plus the separation of oil and other contaminants. So. And you do it right there at the Yeah, at you the just, drain? it would be, yeah. you know, an intermediate structure. You just put it right on the existing drain line mm -hmm. out. What was the other, what was the alternative that you were suggesting? Uh, water quality structure. So that would be like a four technics unit. Um, uh, Storm Scepter creates one. They're more expensive. They cr they're more for um, removal of, they're typically used in like roadways to mm -hmm. um, higher TSS removal. Mm -hmm. So more part of particles, you know, it's a rubber tire, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Where an oil or water separator, because of the nature of the site, I thought that was more appropriate, but I created the plan with two options. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> can, I'm, I'm not sure I can tell the contours here. My, maybe it's my mm -hmm. eyes, but they're, they're green. Right. They're green. Mm -hmm. I don't well, I know, think it's on you, that you plan. Do you get the numbers, and can you tell which way it's going? If you wanted, maybe. Is it all coming? Would it help it? Yeah. It's going it's this way. way. I, this is the latest set of plans. Those are actually. That's what so this is one forty. It's not just for me. I want everybody to see. Are there a couple? Option two is probably the one that you'd like to look at more. So you just, you know, it's a simple. Oh, so that is the pipe. Uh, pavement cut, patch pavement. But if you needed to replace this line, you could, or you just add the, um, the intermediate. Separator, but you should be using the same stormwater outfall for that. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, what is the date of those plans? Got another copy of what is the date of the plans with those two options that you're looking July, at now? July 10th. This is the separated version. All right, so we have the May 25th plans. The May 25th is the site plan. These are the engineering plans for, this, for the drainage of the septic. Okay. That was a plan that was created by uh, even associates. All right, and used as the existing plan for the site. Uh, and the so plan that was approved by the ZBA was this was May the, 25. Correct. The 25th plan so they didn't see even. these other ones. They did not. They didn't review yes. them. This is just done. the modification for the stream uh, so the drain that they had no. The drain, they had no bearing. Has the single drain line with the construction details. Okay. Added. They knew so I think this board will want to see these newer plans, and I'd like to get a copy of those, too. Yeah. Yeah. These are not construction documents. They're spec. Um, and you used the, the May 25th ones. Yes. Uh, specs. Correct. Those are, yeah. those are referenced. Yep. Okay, but what's, this, is, this is dated July 12th, 10th. So yeah. is there another one that's, delayed, that's dated something else? No. No. Just the first, the first, this is the, only set. the first one's done by Eaton. We're on the twenty fifth, right? And so the second ones are done by by you Saruta. guys. Then. Yes, Saruta. Saruta. Okay. So this makes it seem like all everything's What's sloping the to the to the drain in the Sorry, middle, but curious. in the Correct. back there it's one forty six. And up front is one forty seven. Yep. And this. This so from yeah. this is lower. Oh. So we just to say that, that drain is significantly lower the, the from the height of the basement, the the base of the building, 
going out, it's significantly lower. Right, what? Right, 145. But then you go, uh, what's that? And it gradually, it gradually will go back up to a flat surface where the sales area will be. It's a little, it's a little rough. We're going to smooth that out. That's there because it's a little bit this. I'd like to have it slope a little bit better to that drain. Mm -hmm. But that'll be, be taken care of once the uh, septic is uh, installed. Right. Yeah. That would typically be shown on the plans as the... Uh, so this would be existing conditions, and then there would be your proposed conditions, which would show a regrading re area yeah. and what that final condition would be. Yeah. And then out behind the stockade fence there, it's up at 140. 146. 146. Yeah. So that that water looks like it slopes right off to um, to the wetlands there, does it? It's kind of flat. I mean, all, I know around, it's, all around there, it's literally flat. I know the whole site is fairly flat, but when you're talking about water running, it's finding inches matter. So is that? This is considerably lower than what's over here and what's because here. It goes up to one so in seven. other words, that side where the dumpster is, that's what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about oh, over, over here, here going. Sorry. Just yeah. the great middle east side of the tree. Correct. Got it. Yeah, and this is all flat around this part of the building. And the and the blue line is your that's your that's the plot line. Yeah. Yes. It's a little curved over there. So even if it goes down here, it's still your property. I mean, part of our thing is not putting water on other people's property. That's no, problem. in fact, there's neighbors. The neighbor, neighbor to the north, his property actually drains out onto our property. In fact, majority half of the water that was going to that drain was from his property to the north. This is option two. I'm sorry, he's asking you. Yeah, option two is the oil separator system. Do you see that one? And also, Mr. Chairman, I think for a final review by the board, they would need to know which one you're doing, option one or two. Well, that's one from one. Yeah. Okay. We're leaning towards the oil water separator. It suffices what the ZBA had mentioned about what if a motorhome was there or a car or whatever the case may be. That's going to do a much better job than, this, than the other option. So that's why we did that. And being that you're putting the septic in, the equipment's there, so we just want to do it all in one shot. Mm -hmm. So it's what back to so the higher. So that's gonna push the water this way. No, because that, that's what I thought at first, but then somewhere no. it said 147. Right. And this is 146, so it's actually going that way. So the right, high but point it's is here. Down here as well. Where where, where is the septic right. line? So running? this is going this way. So if you're looking at the way. plans there. But, on that That's plan, do you see the word hope? It looks like HDPE. Right below that is like a square box with an X. That would be your tank. The, the line reason I ask is I know that we ran into this one time in this, and when, when these lines cross, doesn't there have to be distance between them mm -hmm. vertically? Mm -hmm. And I that doesn't show up here, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So I have to double check on the. That's the septic right here. It's oh, going right, right over there. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. boy, yeah. That's a good point. I remember in Deerfield when they were doing their set thing, we had an issue of, of the vertical distance between the, the yeah. drainage yeah. and the uh, septic line. So I just was curious if that. That's where your dad put the tank. There's no, there's no drainage line. No. Your dad has it where the line goes indicated across here. Indicated there, just, just location. Oh, Lisa. Can you go to the car and get the septic information? Well, the leach field is over here, so the right. septic is leaching over here. Right. So and that's going that way, but you're right, it crosses over. And I don't think they're solid. We just submitted the septic plans on Monday, but I got a copy in the car. So it's, Lisa, Lisa will go grab that. Where's my keys? Oh, other pocket. It should be in a manila envelope. I think it's in the back seat. All right, let's come so back. Let's uh, the line come out. back to cross okay. here. Drainage, okay. parking. Right so F is parking, so walkways, no. driveways, and other access and, and that's egress. A foot that's all the surface. Right. Out. Here, right? Exactly. Yeah, but there's no overlap of the drainage. In that. Actually, where he, he has he oh, has the um, okay. leach field okay. plan over here. Okay. Over there here, appears to be just an easement over which they have access. Yeah, yeah, we discussed that the last time. Yeah, we don't know what this is exactly is. There's an easement, and there's also access directly on the property across the front. Right. 
So the easement is for the adjacent lot. It's not for this okay. lot. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So where where is the actual access that you're planning what to use for 20, the business? Twenty foot one. It's, it's from. Uh, there's a forty foot driveway there that we the own. Plan that there's a there's a plan that says bituminous paved entrance there. You see that? So it's a real wide. Yeah, it's a Where am I looking? You're on the wrong plan. Oh, you're you're on the wrong plan. Plan. oh, you want to be on this other plan? Yeah. Site plan. So oh, right that's here. it right here. here, so, here. So, so this is the easement right here. Basically. Okay, for the, that's where the neighbors are. Yep. So we own the 40. Okay. And that is paved. All this the way. This is all paved. In fact, some of the pave comes over paved. further. What's really depicted because it's broken up. So and there's gravel that actually comes up further. Okay. around this area and you were going to take this pavement out and pavements, replace it with the, the gravel the good the pavements that's there now will be repaired and then we're going to put gravel this right. okay thank you existing trees 10 inch scout upper or better and existing tree shrub masses proposed that, plantings landscaping and screens that's all shown i think you've got a lot of that on there yep. existing and proposed exterior lighting that's on the plan and what so what does that can you just speak to that so we're installing over the large door will be a light that can light up the parking lot area if need be. Then we have two lights that will be above the two doors. One's a pre-existing entry door. Uh, then we'll be installing a new one where our design center will be. So you have that lighting. Uh, then on the south side, uh, north side, and west side, we'll also have security lights. So that way I can control them if I need to walk outside or what have you. And what are the icons that show that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing that. We provided that already um, to the town, a lighting plan, which was approved already. All right, well, that would need to be reviewed by yeah, your board as well. Plan? Well, or unless we just gave it to you last time. I'm, I'm mixed up. <laughs> Either we showed it to you on the preliminary meeting or it was no Z did. Well, I don't see well, anything in your file. Well, we didn't, we didn't it was submitted, it so it's... Official last time, so you know, we just had a discussion. It, it may be in... the impression that you would have had access to all of the yeah. materials we already submitted to the ZBA to inform your decision. Yeah, that's not necessarily true. You know, we need... You know, yeah. for, for his benefit, I was at one of the ZBA hearings, and the ZBA, they were talking about all this stuff, which is not really in their preview but uh, yeah. they did speak to that <laughs> imagine that the style lighting is your old school warehouse lighting with a shield um so the so main thing is it's down it's all down, down. down it doesn't go out that far 20 30 feet from the building if that um i have checked in with eversource about reinstalling a light that was on the light pole that was removed at some given point it's only 15 dollars they claimed per month it's worth putting back in as an LED, so I'm working on that now. Um, but the uh, the lights that I would probably have on on a regular basis would be at least one of the lights above one of the doors, at least ex, you know the design center in particular. Um, we're going to have security cams at our night vision um, that come right to my phone, actually, so for security purposes. All right, so let's if we can just make sure we get that lighting plan. Sure. Uh, I compliance with all applicable provisions of the zoning bylaws. J uh, certified list of abutters. So I, again, I don't have it, but I think it's the office might you. Well, they, obviously they sent, sent them, it out. You through. have the return receipt cards. That's, so that's why they I, sent the notices. Signage. What do we got for signage? You only have a sign that's going to be depicted on the building itself, and it's under the 35 or 36 square feet that would be the maximum. So it's going to be under that, which, is six, which that would equate to a six by six. Um, temporarily, we're going to put a banner up there for right now, which is also undersized. It's so that'll be I on think the four by eight, I think, is what I ordered the other day. So that's on the building? It'd be on the building, anything correct. Out, anything out front? Nope. Nope. I, I'm going to have my vehicles lettered up, and I think that'll be sufficient. <laughs> uh, and then application fees and inspection fees set forth in the rules, so we already went over that. So those are the main submittals. What, what part of the zoning was that? 5400? Yeah. 5430 submittals. 5430 submittals. 5400. At the end of the, uh, it's, you know, it's at the end of the, the main zoning. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm looking. I'm we might be able to, if we have access to a printer and email, we can print off that lighting plan. I believe I have that in an email. So then we sometimes ask for um, 
on-site and off-site impacts to proposed project including traffic, noise, other environmental, so traffic, you're talking. It was addressed with the police department and so forth and there is no issue with the 40 foot wide driveway. Noise, now the zoning, the ZBA gave you certain hours of operation. Right. Yes. Um, and then even during the day, what kind of noises is mostly well, in the? Those hours that they depicted was open to the public. Um, there was no restriction outside of that, but they didn't put a noise restriction. They put no they noise they restriction. They didn't have any concerns about noise. Yeah. So we have a. I mean, in the, the town bylaws have a noise have a decibel thing. I don't um, think we're gonna have to worry about that in there. Right. So I mean, we're doing screw guns and uh, you know cutting wood on a bandsaw or whatever. There are no, there's you know there's no close residential to this at all. Well, yeah, oh, there's one. You have the apartment to the yeah, south. To the south is different. Yeah. Close, yeah. But again, it's none of, none of the works. I mean, my employees are going to be leaving for somewhere around five, six o'clock, depending upon what time of the year. So, if anybody's there causing trouble, it's me <laughs> doing some late work. All right. Should I take? Uh, can I take some? See if there's any public comment. Me? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Okay. So, if any, uh, this was this is a public hearing. So, is there anybody from the public that would like to make a comment about this project at 707 Greenfield Road? All right. That's easy. All right. Anything else from planning board members? Anything else we need to? So I. Again, we always wish the uh, determination was made by the CONCOM because often if there's a water issue, then they could do it uh, and then we could just piggyback on that. So that's the last couple times we've done it. Uh, at this point, we don't, we don't know what they're going to say. Yeah. If we, as a, the planning board, had our two cents, I would go along with the applicant. I would like to see uh, the oil separator instead of the storm scepter. I, I think that has a better chance of ca catching any oils. And so in my experience with the uh, storm scepter is that if you do get a, a heavy rain, the things like an agitated um, washing machine and all the solids get lifted up and washed down the pipe anyway. So That's not good. I, uh, the oil separators is yeah, uh, a much better way to go in my opinion. That's, that's so your that's recommendation. Yeah. For that particular site, that's what yeah. Being a green company, I'd rather go that route. <laughs> and then, it, then it's a matter of maintenance, of course, and yeah. getting it cleaned out occasionally. Yeah, and yeah. talking with Bill about it, it says it's a once a year clean out type yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I could put an operations and maintenance schedule on the, yeah. the and construction plan. Yeah. It's yeah. just a short write up. And, uh, and if you could do that before the CONCOM review, then sure. that's it. Okay. We'll include that in the details. So. Do, you, do you not want a lighting plan? Yes. You, well, you said you had it, so we want to see yeah, it. Well, I, I have it on email. I if I have access, I can give it to you tonight. That's no, that's, we just we just want it in the file. Yeah. Sure. And then um, just get back to parking. What's the um, we have bylaws about parking? Um, Yes, they're required for different. No, I, I'm sorry, I didn't bring all my materials. Yeah, I, I didn't realize we were going to be getting into this level 50, of detail. 5410 so. or 5420? Dang it. It's 50, isn't there a 54? It's not, it's, yes, there's a 54. I don't think it's in 54. It's in 12. That, it's in that was addressed by Dick um, during the ZBA hearing. And there was no. 3100. We exceed um, the requirements. Is, yeah, construction or application 5412. Um, Require a site plan review construction or expanding of a parking lot for a municipal, institutional, commercial, or industrial or multifamily structure which results in a cumulative total of 10 or more parking spaces or 2,000 square feet of parking area. And how many parking? We have 12 for retail. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I think it's 5,400 jobs. Eight, eight. No, it's like looking at the, the parking requirements, we have not what triggers site plan review. It's, you're okay, already doing right. site plan okay. review. What triggers it in terms of parking isn't relevant at this parking point. You just want to look okay, at what parking right. is there. Respective to the parking regs, it looks like. John I was found have that. thought that that would have been addressed by the ZBA, but let me look and see what the requirements are. So it depends on what your principal use is, right. and you may. Okay, so the principal reduced general retail one per 250 square feet of gross floor area. I counted 24 total. That's including employee parking. And the building is 2,500. The, the retail 
the, uh, you know, it's outdoor retail, so. Yeah. 12 of those are your retail. You have a total of uh, eight for customer. That's including the handicap. Oh, yeah. No, it's not industrial, it's commercial. And four of those are storage. So a lot of these are one space per 500 square feet. And what are you talking about? They got 2,500, so you're talking 2,500. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, you're well, yeah. 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 So I think the question to the planning board is, is, is there more information? Do we need more review by, by uh, Pat or anybody else? Do we want to hear from the CONCOM? I feel like we're not doing um, our job unless we have a good, I mean, I'm sorry CONCOM can't be here, but just in terms of the usage and the change of usage, I think that that, um, and it sounds like you're on it but that that's really a, a critical piece in terms of the change of usage for this spot. Yeah. Um, so what, what is the water? The, the drainage. Drainage. And yeah. this, this concern. And um, I, I think the applicant is well aware and on, you know, on the project, but that is outside of our purview. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it merits, you know, extending the um, public hearing just until we hear from them. I think um, for us to jump ahead of them is... But would, regardless of what they said, it wouldn't, wouldn't it really affect our, would it? Well. I mean, they're going to make, they're going to make the applicant deal with that one way or the other. Yeah. So if we approve the site plan, it. Do you feel comfortable approving the site plan without any kind of recommendation from them? Well, they're not going to make a recommendation to us because, like, the, not, like what the well, Z. They're making a recommendation to the applicant. Well, they're going to well, tell you. They're going to tell them. Yeah, tell them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so yeah. I guess. But what happened was with the ZBA is they kind of went outside of their place yeah, yeah. And, and did lighting and things that we were supposed to do. Right. I, I don't want this board to do the same thing because the water is the up to the Conservation Commission. Let them deal with that. I, I am, and actually, I'm totally, as you know, I'm totally happy for them to do their job. I do yeah. not want to do their job at all. Yeah. I just want to be in support of that and be sure yeah. that, you know, I guess that's all. I mean, I'm not, I'm not at all, like, you know against doing our job i just think uh so let me just ask pat is there a i know we always go by this order thing like yes and order. you've already done it backwards yeah yes the zba is not to issue a special permit pursuant to your bylaws until and unless you have approved a site plan review yeah. and any conditions you put on site plan review as a planning board then need to be included in that zba what special permit the uh, Mr. Ar Arthurton tried to do this himself. So he came in and he was told that all he needed to do was file his EBA application, which is what he did. Yeah. And if the analysis had been done in a different way, we would have done this in a different order. Right. And that's why. I, I, and, 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 and it's and actually not your. I, I, it's not the operator. Right. It's, it's not the operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure yeah. all that no, no. out. No, we're not, right. we're not I'm saying that. Say that. <laughs> so anyway, but, but here we are. So, so, uh, but here we are. So, um, so things are already out of sequence, right. so I would support you in waiting so you don't do everything completely backwards. That's yeah. Yeah. Be what my recommendation uh -huh. would be. I don't, I don't think it's a, it would you know, add a lot of time in terms and may save you time if you don't have to go back and have things redone. Well, we need but to get open soon, so I agree I know. with getting yeah, so this may, moved it along. It may seem like you. it's an extension in time, but in fact, you know, if you if you and ConCom can work together and and, yeah. and structure it in such a way so that things don't have to go back and be redone, right? Then it will save you time. So, are you asking? telling that we're going to have to come back here for an additional public hearing before the? If they put additional conditions on, I'm afraid you would have to. That's something you're going to need to speak to the building commissioner about. Because yeah. the bylaws do require that any conditions of the planning board be included in there. So then there's that time frame that would be entailed. Do they have, a, do they have a, a hearing date for the con, con I have not been notified that there's a hearing date. I filed the application at the same time I filed the application with you. Um, I tried to follow up with the admin person and I haven't got a hearing Because they're, date. I mean, they meet at least yeah, monthly. I'm right. surprised yeah. that's not. I don't know when the hear meeting is. I have not yeah. got a hearing notice. I haven't got any response hmm. at all to the application. I've included myself coming down here personally, and nobody seems to know any answers. 
and right. you know this is drawing out to the point where we're not going to get open at all this year. I need to get open. At this point. My goal, my goal is to. I think if you were to approve the oil water separator, for example, that's over and beyond your scope. I understand that, but at the same time, I I'm environmentally conscious of myself. I think they would agree if you agree to the oil separator. It is more cost to us versus leaving it alone as it is. But I believe it would it would suffice, you know, the future of possibly a vehicle being in that area and it makes sense. And by doing that, that can allow us to get this project scope done quicker so we can be open before September, which is the end of the season for camping. So that's I'm um, just um, we could easily we could put a condition on conditional on the con con, but like you say that's that's almost repetitive because right. if they don't allow it, they don't allow it. Yeah, exactly. So that's, I guess, my question. Well, is our I don't want to just, just one second. I just a procedural thing. So, um, so if we went ahead with a site plan approval, say you approved that, yeah. you wanted to do the oil water separator, and then yeah. Hong Kong wanted to do something different. You would right. probably have to come back and revisit, right. and that would be renoticing. Right. So in that case, it's best to leave this open, hearing this open. hearing open, so that right. you wouldn't have because to. The, because we'll have changed. a meeting the first Monday in August. Um, they probably, they normally meet the third third Thursday. That was third Thursday, was my, I remember, too. So I'm hoping you're on that schedule. I can find out tomorrow, and we can make sure you are on that schedule. And then it would be a week later for us, so it, it, it probably would be easy enough. But can I ask you, John, I, is, it, is it our decision, regardless if we um, recommend the oil water separator and the conservation wants something different, why, why, I mean, it's their decision, not ours. That's the point. We're not recommending it, and that's why we have to wait. That's my point, is that it's not that we're, that's their call. So right. if they make that review and they make yep. that suggestion. So how would that change us approving this? Because they're going to, you know, they're going to, you know, put whatever requirements they feel necessary to protect the wetlands, so it should have no bearing on what we decide. Where does that Where does that decision get registered? When that decision ultimately there needs to be a single site plan which has right. everything on That's it that has idea. been approved by all the boards. So you don't want to if you're going back and sorry, this is this is more procedural stuff. But if you're if you're enforcing it, you don't want to have to chase down each no, that, avenue. Yeah. You want right. one it's place be a single say, document. Here it is, and that's why. It makes more sense uh, to hear from them, right. and then I mean I don't think we're in a we're in a big pickle about this. This is one really big, important piece, but it's not. It it's is not a deal breaker. It's just a time frame issue. I, at yeah, this point. I do understand that. But it sounds like it's only a week or two difference to do it and have it done in the right order. That's if it's done in one meeting. Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem for us. I had it scheduled for two weeks to be doing the septic here. Right. And at the same time, while they're digging up, you'd be doing whatever we may or may not have to do to that existing drain. Right, 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 right. Because they can always come back, like it is explained to us, and say, just take it out. Right. We don't need to uh, meet with the Conservation Commission. No. If they should meet next week, then. Well, I mean, yeah. If we, if we approve it and say we, we suggest an oil water separator, and if they want something else, Fine. And if they agree with us, they fine. It's typically not considered to be um, appropriate for them to have a condition that's based mm -hmm. on another board having a condition. Sure. Nor I suppose I, I get it. appropriate for the EPA to approve the permit subject to the site <laughs> Agreed. Plan. Correct. Agreed. But the same hand, oil separators probably were your most extreme versions of uh, filtration, I, I, too. I don't think anybody is. That's the thing. I, I don't think. I don't they, think they really would go anything higher than what? that. We're just talking I'm about the how. Yeah. So I'd be forced to meet without a lawyer. <laughs> They're not there. They're not there. That's the fourth person. It may be posted on the town website if you can pull that up. They often have them posted in here. Yeah, we were informed last minute that they had one, and we never got notification even. Oh, that they've had a meeting yeah. in June? Yeah, when it was like two days before I was meeting. told about it, and that's, there's no way to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat, yeah. one of the things you, you had just mentioned that um, you wanted to have everything under one permit, so we wanted to have the Conservation Commission's decision be part of the site plan review. Can we approve the site plan but just hold it until we get that their decisions and then 
apply it to it? Do we no, need because really any changes, and so what you've approved isn't what is in front of you. Every, there needs to be what but I said. There needs to be a single site plan. Yeah. So there needs to be a final plan that has everything on it. You know, no options, but Including everything as pipe determined. Pipe. Yeah. That's called the determination, right? Well, site no, plan. it's just the single, the single site plan that would that so all bodies agree to, and that then is ultimately the one that is used for enforcement purposes. Like Rachel said, so there can't be you know, like one approved by different bodies. You can't hold yours out and add things to it later. That's. So you want them Making to make a whole, new, changes. a whole new site plan with all of the changes from everybody else? Yes. If no, there I mean, are changes not, by this, yes, there right. should be a final. It, it, it may be this LI2 with just, I mean, that might, if that's, if this is what is chosen, okay. some combination of this with what's here. So this just shows approximate locations and area drains. This has some more details. So, you know, ultimately there should be one single yes. plan that everybody agrees to. It is. And it has I'm, everything on it. Yeah. And so there oftentimes will be a single, you know, after you've been talking with all the boards, and just like one last iteration of the plan to get everything. Well, like it is instructed to us, they may or may not require us to do anything of this. They may even say, just take it out. And it's easier for me to say, take it out. Can you say it? It was explained to me with the different various, whether it was somebody from ZBA or it could be the building inspector, that they were just uh, making a statement that. It's a 25-year-old 20, drain that's been there. It's, they can pretty much say whatever they want. When it comes to it, you can just take it out and solve the problem right now is what it was in, in, implied to me, where I don't have to do anything related to this drain. And what's the drainage? It is what it is. That's what was explained to me because it's all pervious um, substrate that's there already. So, but I still feel that we need to have something there since it's already pre-existing. Let's yeah. just modify if we have to modify it. Put an oil water separator. It's not going to do anything beyond what ComCom would ever come up with because as far as my knowledge is, there's nothing that can make anything cleaner than that oil water separator. So if you were to approve the oil water separator, then I can allow my contractor to go ahead and put it in. Let's get the septic get in. Let me get open. Because if I don't get open, we need to make our bills here, and this is drawn on since April. So that's where my standpoint is. Which is fine. This is the first public hearing, and the first yep. time we're looking at it, so our time frame is obviously different than your time frame. Correct. And that, you know, that's, yep. that's the way it is. Yep. But the idea is you'll be here for many years. So Absolutely. And, and the town of Deerfield has been here for hundreds of years. We expect to be here for hundreds of years. Absolutely. So we're not worried about a couple of weeks. I just want to let you know. <laughs> right. I, I mean, that. we hear you, but yeah. we're not going to make a decision based on that. Yeah. So, I, but again, we've gone through everything. We like, you know, all other issues. We just want to get the, have the lighting plan. We sure. actually need the ZBA decision. We don't have that in our file. Yeah. Hear from the CONCOM, boom, it's, it's done. You know, so I think, I think that's the first thing is we, we acknowledge that it doesn't need a site plan. Uh, that, a storm no water. peer review, no, no, right. no peer, no peer review. review. No okay. Review. Um, so if, so if CONCOM was to meet next week. They're not meeting to the 27th, okay. And they don't have an agenda online, so I have no idea what they're going to be talking about. Maybe they will. Well, so I, I, <laughs> I had some emails with them trying to set this up I together, know. and it didn't work. So I'll, I'll find out, but I'll make sure this is on it. They, they know, they get, they received the materials. So. Um, and then the following week, and they don't have right? a. That's not a public hearing for them, right? They do it. Yeah, yeah it is. So if it's the 27th, today's the 10th. They could. Make yeah, sure I don't know the specific requirements, but it'd be good. If so we got to follow up tomorrow. Make sure it's agenda, posted. And, uh, they can post for when a I've done it. But I filed the application, you know, at the same time I filed the application for the site plan, I filed the application for the CONCOM. So it's up to the town to do its job and schedule the hearing and get it on the agenda, you know, so we can be heard. Um, I spoke process with the application appropriately. I mean, this is yeah. really frustrating. I spoke with Priscilla, and she was handling uh, for tonight's meeting the notification. Right. My impression, she told me, was both notices were going out at the same time. All right. So let's. So, I'll, so I'll, it may uh, have been done. So let's follow up with that. Tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. Paper, I wasn't so copied I don't know. on and you notice a public hearing. Was it in the paper the there that you read at the beginning? I wasn't copied on the notice of public hearing for this meeting either. I had to come and ask for it. The town has been undergoing administrative transition. I understand that. that. It's still a work in progress. Yeah. No, it is there is the notice the in that packet, Pat? Is the paper notice in that packet? I have a couple yeah. of newspapers. I don't yeah. know what the other. Well, it has to be in twice. So it's Monday, July. It's right. Monday, that doesn't June talk 26th. about the uh, con con. Con con. It just talks about our. And uh, this is just planning board. It appears. Yeah, 
I only see planning board here. Because we paid the fees, so. So I would just advise you, I'll, I'll try to follow up tomorrow, but I would yeah, ask you I'll, to do I'll the same. Again. Yeah. So. And, so. and if you still feel like you need some additional help, I would call the town administrator. Yeah. So do we have a... Um, we continue. You want to make that motion? I'll move that we continue this meeting. Open, I mean, the, the uh, public yeah. hearing on 707 Greenfield Road. Till... Till, till date and time certain. August 1st. Well, my calendar ran out. What's the first Monday? Did, uh, August 1st, you said? I think you said it was August 1st. Well, August 1st is a Tuesday. Yeah. Oh. So then it would be the following it week. The 6th. It wouldn't be July 31st? Oh, Somebody August second 7th? that yet? First Monday will be the 7th. August 7th is the next meeting. Is that a Monday, August 7th? Yes. Monday is on August 7th. It's my father's birthday. Okay. Old fashioned. Yes, she's I had a trip planned that, that week. Well, Honestly, by that time, yeah. you know what? You don't even have to be here. If, it, if all goes fine, if they okay. can't come, then it's really just it's not, a... Do you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, nice. I'm scheduled to be in Pennsylvania, so... Yeah, yeah. well, we all have lives. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it makes right. it tough. Like okay. It. And you'll send, like, some kind of notice to us at that point? There isn't an additional notice that goes out There's with... No, okay. no. Yeah, with the no, continuation. You do have those continuation first, forms. That's we're telling you right now. Have them yes. <laughs> okay. They had been added to the packet. Do we have a uh, second? Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? Five zero, Five zero zero. Zero to continue it. Aye. I think that. Appreciate your time. Uh, apologize for my short temperedness a little no, bit. That's <laughs> So, I, I don't know if that's the thing. Yeah. No, that, those are the ones Bill had. These, right. These are the, this is yeah. the uh, Harold Eaton ones. Yeah. Site plan. Yeah. Yeah. So just just, I don't want to take your only copy. Just flip them. Yeah. Yes. So I'll, I'll have to have one I kept one here. We I have one here. Pack. Yeah. We, we have, have one another here. One here. Sure? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. There's one down there, too. There's several of those taken right. around. So then I will take this one and I'll get Yep. Digital copies of those other ones. Okay. Are those extra copies? Sure. Did they say? Great. I'll get that over to you. And I'll get there's you. Two, there's two. There should be there should option be one, option one two. two. If there's extras, yeah. I'd, I'd take a copy of each. Thank you. That's, that's one zero. There's one point two. There's oh, there's three of them. Excellent. Good work. Oh, see, there are. This is a whole set. Yeah, this okay. is a whole set, and I would. You guys would want to have a whole copy of this, and I will get another one. Thank you very much. Sorry. You can. Thank you. Thank you. Ask. Uh, are these extra ones, or do you need them back? Are these? You can hang on to those if you'd like. Um, can you send them out digitally? Do you yes. Have, do you have that capability? Certainly. Yeah. So I, I gave uh, Christina a card. If you could 
send me the digital copies? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I can get you another you person. Yeah. That would be awesome. It helps me. Look I'm, I'm going to be here for the next meeting. Oh, okay, well. so, we'll so. Get, we'll exchange cards before you okay. leave. Okay, here's yeah. these back. Then I guess we can keep these. Are, and this is the file that comes to as well. Okay, set it right here. So, yeah, set it there. Um, into Priscilla. Yeah, yeah. Or Dick, but Priscilla is better. For public records law purposes, you kind of need to go through right. the administrative structure, so everything makes it. A, yeah, I know. Very rough. It's like wonderful attorney. Thank you. Next up is another. Um, public hearing, so let me do this correctly and read the notice first. Usually she prints it out in a bigger print for me, but it's only instances. <laughs> I'm not reading that fine uh, print in the newspaper, yikes. Um, notice of public hearing, the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on July 10th, 2017 at 7 p.m. approximately, in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, at the request of Brett Bannis, DBA Ideal Storage, for a site plan review of a property located at 247 Greenfield Road, Assessors Map 122, Lot 3, for construction of a self-storage facility. Copies of the plans are available for inspection at the town office during normal business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. And we have a completed site plan review application stamped by the town, received, uh, fee paid, and it has a lot of the additional documents, so I think we can move forward. And this says um, the proposed use is new construction, commercial, and it is described on the application. The proposed work shall include the construction of four large storage unit buildings, which are something um, comprised of a smaller individual storage units. Also included as part of the proposed work is a two-story office building as well at the site. Features for the project, parking, drainage, utilities, etc. So, welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, so, if you could, can you, I have you, uh, you, sorry, you had to sit through the, the other okay. one, but you saw what we, the kinds of things we discussed. So, if you could about. present yourself and then and, and, uh, and your team, and then give us a little. Sure. Uh, so, uh, can is, is this working? Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah I think, come right out. Shoot out. Yeah. If it's not. So okay. this is mostly for the TV, but it's also if there is a larger audience, right. the loudspeaker <laughs> goes on. But I think people okay. can hear. So. Well, good. So my name's Henry Cropsey, and I'm an attorney uh, representing Brent Banus of Ideal Movers and Storage, which is the applicant. And what our, was your last name, sir? Uh, Cropsey. Oh, C R O P is in Peter S E Y. And with me, I have Jonathan Sirota, who's the uh, engineer who's prepared our site plan in front of us, and so uh, generally speaking, John's gonna carry most of the weight here tonight, but I'll play master of ceremonies. Um, but as the project is uh, considered, what I'd like to do first off is direct your attention to the left-hand uh, uh, picture up there. That's a picture of my client's existing facility in uh, Hadley, Massachusetts. And the main reason I wanted to point this out is that um, what's unusual about it, if you've been if you're at all familiar with self-storage facilities, is this one actually looks nice, you know? <laughs> um, and that's my point here, is that this is also gonna be in the same vein as that. We have some, uh, the main difference would be, this one's gonna be a little smaller. Um, and as far as the facade of the, of the two-story office building is concerned, you'll note that that's kind of closer to the street with the self-storage facilities behind the building. Uh, so really it presents primarily as kind of a quasi-residential look, if you know what I mean. Um, that being the case, my clients are also uh, considering uh, 
changing the facade. Right now you'll see this one that they have in their existing facility is kind of a stone facade. They're thinking that clabbered would probably be more appropriate for Deerfield, you know, but they haven't determined exactly the style of clabbereds yet. Um, I know that's not exactly ostensibly part of the purview of the planning board, but I just wanted to point out the, the general aesthetic that we're looking for here, um, number one. And then uh, as far as the rest of this is concerned, I mean, primarily the board's purview is um, all the, you know, zoning, the, the, the methods by which this plan is compliance with, in compliance with zoning and the engineering background for all that. So I'm going to let John take over for those issues and then we'll kind of collectively work out the details of any questions you might have from that point. So John, take it away. Thank you, Henry. Um, as Henry said, I'm John Sruta. I'm with Sruta Engineering. I'm a civil engineer and uh, the project engineer for the site. And uh, I'd like to go into the background and some site characteristics. As mentioned before, um, where the proposed work includes the demolition of the existing buildings on site and the construction of four new office buildings, which range in size from 7,200 square feet to about 16,000 square feet, which are comprised of individual smaller uh, self-storage facilities. John? So, John? Um, is that Excuse Brent Bannis there? Is that Brent so Bannis? there's uh, connected, yes. pervious, and impervious yes. driveways uh, scattered throughout the site. Yep. Um, pr proposed drainage system, which drains towards the back of the site. We have an infiltration and detention system, which were sized according to the Massachusetts Stormwater Management Standards. Um, there's really a minimal impact of utilities on site. Uh, Can I just slow you down? Is this, sure. I just want to make sure this is, is this what we're looking at? It's yep, so that's the site plan. As you can see, it's a, a lot more involved than in the plans we presented earlier. Because I actually, I actually wouldn't mind a locus to get started. Yeah. As, you, as you start to describe this, I want to get a handle on, so you, okay, on, so what we're, on where we are in town. Where, where is what's there now? It's right next to No, this is for the, don't tell me, tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's off Route 5 and 10. Yeah. Um, it's between, what is it, Douglas, Douglas Auctioneers and the Volvo? Auctioneers is on one side and Greg's Auto Repair is on the other side. Across okay. the street All is right. the abandoned medical complex, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing. Oh, so there's the current building on the site. And yeah, so when you said demo, that's what you're... Yeah. The lighthouse. Yeah, the lighthouse. Yeah. So you're, it was, yeah, so you're so demoing the, the uh, so old Greg's medical building. No. No, no, the lighthouse. That's what they're not. Oh, the lighthouse not property. To the, yes. To oh, okay. Well, that's why I was confused. Well, that's why I wanted to clarify. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I just looked it up. I didn't think. It's only, it's next to Douglas, not Greg's. Okay. No, it's, it's next to the uh, Volvo dealership. Between, between the Volvo dealership and Douglas right, 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 right. Auctioneers. Oh, okay. You said Greg's, so that's yeah, what was confusing. Greg's. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. When, when they said yeah. Greg's. Both cars. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the, there's really minimal impact of utilities for the site. Um, there's not a wa lot of water demand um, it, where the septic is just that was sized for uh, you know, part-time office workers. Um, you know, minimal electric use. Um, there will obviously be a telco tel uh, excuse me, telecom hookup for the office. Um, so site access. So you, you just quickly went over septic. Septics wouldn't change. Is that what you're suggesting? No. So we're uh, we have a new septic system design. It's in, uh -huh. included in those plans. Um, it's sized accordingly for the part-time office workers. So now there was a there was a low spot in the back of the property. No. Um, so yeah, it does naturally it does drain towards the back of the property. Uh, there is a low spot. And under the proposed conditions, it, the site's going to be generally flat. There's a little bit of fill towards the back, but generally it's sloping towards the back like it is in the pre-developing conditions. So the uh, septic system will be located in the low spot towards the back. Um, there's an existing drainage swale that used to be owned by, I think it's B&M Railroads. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the majority of the site drains to. And so that's I'll that same area that, that the uh, propane company put a bridge over it? I don't think that's on our property. Isn't that right there where that was? No, that's way up. Yeah. Further, I, further up the road. Okay, all right, yep, all right. Oh, Rachel's 
There's a swale that's back there, and there's okay. an existing wetlands that's behind the uh, Volvo dealership. But um, Here. anyways, we're proposing two new curb cuts. Um, that's we submitted an application to the uh, Mass DOT, and we're going to be obviously dem uh, demoing the existing drive. Um, there's two open space areas that we're going to have towards the front of the site. You can see it here. And this is actually going to be for fire retention, so it's actually for stormwater storage. And I'll get into it a little bit more, but the uh, post development conditions are actually an improvement over the pre development conditions for drainage. So not only do we meet the, uh, I think it's uh, Massachusetts Stormwater Standards Article 4 for meeting the PSS removal, but we have less uh, runoff for all soil events. So it's an improvement over the pre-development conditions. Um, so parking requirements, we needed 18 spaces. I, if I remember correctly, I think it was 5,000 for every 5,000 square feet of storage, you need one space. We needed 19 for the site, we have 22. We need two ADA spaces. We've met that requirement by having two ADA spaces. Um, all dimensional and setback requirements this, have been met. There's a chart that's on the, uh, I think it's on the layout. Yep, you got it right there, the layout plan. <laughs> what page is that, Rachel? Uh, That'd be L1. L1. And Probably all zoning. Yeah. And, yeah, okay. And all zoning and town regulations have been met. And if you look at the board here, uh, Mr. Bannis was concerned with the overall aesthetics of the site. And originally we opted for a less expensive material. We're going to use TRG. And we opted to use porous pavers, which are, it's a more expensive option, but it's more aesthetically pleasing. And we wanted, um, we wanted to use materials on site that reflected the overall quality that Ideal Movers is known for. So we wanted a site that's aesthetically Pleasing. I, I, I hope this is not a pain neck. Why two curb cuts? Why not stick? Why were the one? Well, we have uh, a single in and a single, like uh, a one in, one out. Um, we thought that that would be better for tractor trailer truck access, oh, and that's the way it is on its existing facility. So we mentioned that with DOT, um, since it is a one in, one out, they had no issue with it. If it was a two in, two out. Got it. That would be cause for concern for transportation. And they're side by side. Yeah. Okay. And they're set back far enough, so you have a 65 foot uh, setback from the road, so a tractor trailer truck can park without any. Yeah, this is fine. I did. Um, one in, one out, no. So, without going into too much detail with the uh, stormwater, um, we uh, used uh, low impact development tactics for the stormwater management, which include the porous pavers and bio retention. Um, we all the stormwater management standards have been uh, met and were either I'm sorry were either met or exceeded for the project and as I mentioned previously the post development conditions are an improvement over the pre development conditions and uh, this is all addressed in a lot more detail in the stormwater management report if you guys need a copy of that but. and what's the percentage of pervious sur unpervious surface so that project that's shown up there. Now we had to go below the 60%, and that's why we used the pervious pavers to make sure that we were below the 60% okay, pervious surface. Um, and uh, I remember the numbers off the top of my head. So we had we were allowed 62,382. We're at I'm sorry. We we're about 82,382. So we're a few hundred feet below the 60% uh, impervious cover. So that's why we originally opted to use TRG and then switched it to a more aesthetic uh, pervious paver. And uh, I don't know, Henry, if you'd like to. No, I think that's. I think we should open it up to questions from the board at this point yeah. because uh, you know it's a lot to digest, but uh, you're already asking. Good questions. Fortunately, we seem to have the answers, which is a good thing. <laughs> so, who, so you, 
the property owner is Ellen Petrovich? Yes. Is what's what's is that the we're under contract to purchase. Okay. Mm -hmm. But since she's the current landlord. Right, and that is described appropriately and there's a letter from her saying that she consents and gives permission to right. apply for special and permit and things. Is this going to be for your use or are you going to have public people renting the yeah, spaces? No, it's public storage. Public storage. Okay. Self service. Well, the reason I asked that is because you mentioned that there'd be trucks, uh, moving trucks coming in and bringing stuff in and out. So it sounded like that might be for your own stuff. Our people. Plans are to have probably one or two trucks of our own trucks in. But as a percentage, the bigger percentage would be people moving stuff in. Oh, okay. And you have a facility in South in Hatley. Any other facilities? So let me, before we get into our own questions, let's just read what some of the other, some of the other boards have, um, have already been asked to, re to comment on this. Um, Board of Health and Building Commissioner. Proposed plan, God, I wish people would write neater. <laughs> um, <laughs> proposed plans meet all current building codes. Proposed septic meets all sanitary requirements. That's from Richard Kalachewski. Board of Selectmen supports the business, having heard what the planning board will be discussing and reviewing, we believe you will address all appropriate concerns. Well, the select board knows what the planning board talks about. I know. I know. <laughs> it's almost like this. Have they got a, have they got a plan they here? Informed. They haven't informed <laughs> it here. <laughs> Conservation um, Commission, no comment at this time. Is it... Um, have you done a request for determination? We've been meeting the 27th. With right. Con -Con. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were originally uh, attempting to be on for the June hearing, but we just missed it because the DEP uh, fellow went on vacation. Uh, so he could he, he didn't have time to review the plans before he went on vacation. Put it that way. Are there known wetlands here? Or? Not on the property. There we are discharging to wetlands that are off the property. Okay. But again. That's addressed in the notice of intent and also in the stormwater management report. But my impression is for the conservation commission meeting, they'd be reviewing the the NOI more yeah. than anything else. So, and the highway superintendent says no action. Police? Um, no, the police don't do these requests for comments too often. We got to push them a little bit more, I think. Um, <laughs> and fire. Have you had um, any conversations fire, with police or fire? Fire, uh, no, fire department um, really didn't weigh in, but we, we had we did go before the ZBA uh, last week and received a special permit for the new uh, bylaw zone change. And as part of that process, we uh, one of the conditions that they put in, which would made a lot of sense, basically I'm going to call it a lockbox, kind of like the prior app. Knockbox, yeah. Knox they box. call them a knockbox. Knockbox. Yeah. Knockbox. That's a, a new name for me, but the concept's the same. Right. So we're going to have one of those available. And what did you get changed? The zoning changed? No, uh, the, uh, the, the zoning bylaws were changed about 18 months ago to allow for self-storage. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. In All right, town of Deerfield. Yeah, we, Previously, yeah, we did they were yeah. not no, allowed. You, you came and looked for a space in the, in the Oxford yeah, before, right? Where? Did you try to get in the Oxford before? Yes. Or there was somebody? American way. What's Bergen that? Way, yes. Bergen Way, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Good memory. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, just oh. checking. <laughs> I thought that was clear. So they just, uh, you know, ha use their jurisdiction that now yeah. exists to yeah. grant a special permit for this particular right. project. And that, that then we rezoned it, so self-storage warehouse was special permit in... C1, C2, is that it? Industrial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Industrial. C2. Oh, sorry. Okay. C2. C2. Because this is C2. getting my this is projects mixed up. Okay. Yeah. I'm an industrial tomorrow. But today is. Mm -hmm. I still got the old. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's been a new. I, I've not been given or told that there is a new version of those bylaws out. Uh, I will follow up with the town clerk yeah, on that. Yeah, we have a copy of the uh, amended. Yeah, I mean, we've got it because we. 
Yeah, but typically, yeah, so typically, typically the, meeting, the, just the company the that does this thing. will yeah. issue a whole new book with uh, all the changes in it on an annual basis as they change. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah. have to track that down. Yeah. So yeah. we'll work with the town clerk to get that for you guys. Yeah, I think the same thing came up with CBI. Yeah, yeah. So. It, it, <laughs> but definitely but you're, 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 you're trying to get into Merrigan Way prompted us to, to change these bylaws, as I remember it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's I, that's why. I really right. wasn't too actively involved. To get yeah. No. No. Why not? For five. Right. Yeah. I think other people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, it was all right. At least that they needed. Yep. So, mm. I appreciate. It. Yeah. So this is uh, being the public hearing. Can I open it up to the public? Anything else urgent before we go there? I thought we were the board. No, we're opening it up. I'm going to open it up to the public. Okay. We're done. Okay. Well, we're not Are done. Are you done? <laughs> He's no, done. no, no, you're not done. You're just taking a reprieve is all you're doing. <laughs> so would anybody from the public like to uh, comment on this project? Yes, yes, sir. And if you could just tell us who you are and what your comment is. Pat, you, you want know, we, we to have him down here and he could sit at that sure. mic here so they can hear him or turn the mic around that way. Well, that's a good idea. And what's your name? Gary Brotoski. I have a couple questions. There is wetlands on the property according to this map. It says that they're going to be filled. There is an existing isolated so wetlands. Just, just so you know how we do you this is the public none, there gives is. us comments and then just... Oh, I'm sorry. Because sometimes you can get out of hand. Um, and either we respond or else then we ask. Sometimes I'll ask you. But just, mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Yep. Yeah. So there, there are wetlands. It does have, uh, has on the map right here on the right. Right, right which is why I think that's partly why it's got to go to CONCOM too, but uh, we're going to look at that. So. And I guess there's something in the back of the property for this map. Uh, the other question is uh, snow removal. I didn't see that here anywhere where the snow would be piled up, removed from all, the all right, we don't have, sometimes we get you up with, the, with all these things on the chart. Um, what's the best um, map to, do you, do you snow removal on here? So in the stormwater management report and the operations and maintenance schedule, it says snow removal will be towards the back of the site, which would be where the open space septic area is. Right. If so do any of these site plan? Maps have this because that's required on the site plan. Looks like, not just like the, the north way. northwest corners where the septic is, right? Yes. South yeah, I, I I believe there was a call on the layout plan. I'm so, south. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. If south. not, I can amend it to make sure that yeah. there is a call out for it. But yeah. I know that it's mentioned in the stormwater management standards, so yeah. I'll make sure that there is a call out for that. But I thought it was in the layout. So it's in the back. Yes, the south southwest corner. Yeah. And where does that, what does that then melt to? That's uh, septic. Well, that would drain, <laughs> to, that would drain to the detention pond. Um, if you look at the contours, it'd be the natural, or the post slope of the land would drain it to the detention pond without any additional drainage. So it's not gonna flow to any catch basin. It just flows through to the uh, proposed detention pond. Without going through these pages, do you have a difference or proposed elevation to the bottom of that detention basin uh, in relation to the back parking lot? So the bottom of the detention basin is at elevation 93. Mm -hmm. uh, the elevation of the parking lot ranges from 98 to 98.5. So it's about five feet below. Do you? The emergency, excuse me, the emergency spillway is at the same yes. elevation as the, um, the catch basin rims. So there's no risk of it flooding into the post storage, I should say. But for all storm events, it doesn't, it doesn't fill up. When you did perk tests out back there, what was the elevation of the existing water table? Uh, the existing water table, I want to say it was at 91.5, so it was only a few feet down. But there still is a few feet of separation. We do have the two feet of separation we need for the infiltration system. Uh, for detention, for the Massachusetts uh, stormwater standards, you just have to have it above the proposed groundwater. 
elevation. So these are things that we're going to get. We'll probably have someone look at the stormwater report to get into all the calculations. So other questions. Yeah. Yep. What yep. is the existing grade now, and what's it going to be when this project is completed? What, what, you're saying in other words, what, but are you the, raising the property, height of the property. Are so you going to be raising the ground level anyway? So, for the most part, for the majority of the property, it's raised about a foot. It's a few feet of elevation raised in the back. I think the lowest contour is at 94, and that's at this far corner right here. raised a little bit so there is some fill towards the back but that's also beyond view of any neighboring properties and that's closer to the wetland so so in the back you're saying uh, one to two feet of fill uh, towards the back there's four feet maximum but it's uh, two to the, three feet that's for, on the southerly end yeah and that's towards the wetland four feet and then on the north end it's uh, it's about two, two and a half feet. Two to two and a half feet. And it should be, it should, I should also mention that yeah. there's a fence, there's going to be a decorative fence that goes around that's sort of shielding the property as well, but that's going to be set approximately at the existing ground elevation. So. Mm -hmm. Like like this metal fence, you're, this yeah, black metal fence, it's yeah. going to be like You'll that metal a, fence. Yeah. Is that the leech yeah. field there? Right, as you can see right so here. This here. In the worst case scenario, you have no, it's an infiltration yeah. system for the catch basins and stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. It's just a retention. Yep. So you have the where the septic and the leach field is. Too? No, no. This is the infiltration that's going to be underground oh, okay. here. And then that, that then overflows into the retention, right? I get you. And where's the septic and leach field? Over on the south, southwest corner. Septic system is here, the reserve area is here. We have the 50 foot buffer from the, uh, it's shown on the drainage plans. There's a 50 foot buffer from the infiltration system and retention. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Was that? I have one more question. Was that sufficient? You, you kind of got an idea of the grades, and yeah. we'll, we'll double check again the calculations. So, so the, the last question I have is: the maximum lot covered by pervious service is sixty percent. So there's something about bricks or something for driveways. I don't quite these, understand. These pervious are considered pervious. Pervious, um, and this, I think sometimes there's questions about that. Yeah, that's right there are different that. technologies that are used, so you'd need to look at what they right. provide for specs to yeah. get the details. But, but they I do count as LID elements, as he's uh, noted yeah. from the stormwater handbook. And so the question is, in the future, what if somebody goes and paves that, and now it's not no longer pervious? Paves, paves over the paves between and it goes to somebody pavers. else, and they pave it been through this before so that's why I'm asking. Yeah. 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 You, you go to a plan that's approved and then everything changes after that. And I, I, I hear you and that's one of the things in Deerfield here we have to tighten up a so little bit monitoring. So and, how do you and, monitor uh, that and yeah. make sure that doesn't happen because then it I mean in yeah. our in our bylaws we do have any kind of paving of more than I don't know it's actually not a very big area. Two thousand square feet. Um, they have to get a site plan review. They have to come back to here and we get to go talk all about drainage again because it would change. Right. Um, and so that's a matter of monitoring both neighbors and building inspector primarily. Are you a, are you in a butter? Yeah, or butter in the back. In the back. So yeah. you're you're going to have your eagle eye out there to. Watch. 
Well, it's farmland, so we don't go out there. We don't go out there every, no, no, there every day. But uh, I'm just saying that you're there, so you're going to see this as it, you know. But it is the kind of thing that we do want to be sure that we have some kind of checks in, in place so that. Yeah. Um, what are the, what's the, uh, when, the what's when the you're not that there anymore? You know that that's basically it's 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 we have to watch for the town beyond. Now there, the, in this in this right. manual is there the maintenance for the. Operations, man, operations maintenance for the maintenance course pavers for yeah. all the stormwater BMPs. So there's a schedule of when things need to be cleaned. So that's something that you have to inspect it. You know, to go in and inspect. Yeah. If you have a question, and you can bring it up to the board too. From what I'm told too, the the pervious pavers will outlive the flat tops So it's probably just you know, real reason for something. Yeah. I think a lot of it, one, my understanding is it's how it's laid down. If mm -hmm. it's laid down properly with the right spacing and all the rest of that, then it's structurally good and then it also allows for the drainage. Yeah. So that's, uh, keep an eye on that. And those but, are in the front of the property, right? The, well, no, you're saying the whole. On the two outside aisles? Yeah, yeah, it's. Just these two outside aisles here. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, and then Gary in the back, in the back there is um, embedded. Um, in the back there's drain. There's a uh, what do they call it? Underground infiltration. The infiltration for all the the water to go into there and to drain into the ground before it even gets to the surface. So anything that's just discharging out, I'm assuming that you're in the property. In the back, all right. For any storm event, there's less water that's discharging out here for the post-development. So after the property is built, it's an improvement over what's happening now. So there would be more, be less water. Yeah, I'm sorry, less water. There'd be, you know, le less risk of flooding, I should say. Um, it's more so it's an improvement over the pre-development conditions. And that's, that's fine as long as it's built to plan. I've like been through this before and mm -hmm. things get approved and nothing is built according okay. to plan and then you fight for years trying to change it and you get more all i can do is design it so what are the um yeah. <laughs> what is this the slopes between the properties there is there any kind of berm or anything or there's a uh so there's a drainage swale i talked about it earlier i think it's was owned by b&m railroads but it's it's several feet down and back up to his property um so we're basically grading uh, pretty close to the buffer. Not, we're not within the 25 foot buffer, but we, we get pretty close, but we're grading to the property line. There's this drainage swale, and then his property is on the neighboring, mm -hmm. neighboring side, but it's a wooded area, and it's, it's I don't know what the, the cross slope of it would be, but it's pretty steep, maybe a three to one slope. Because right now, I imagine it's 80% pervious. I mean, there's not much building there now, is there? No. Uh, all right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. I have just one question. Electrical service helps come in. Does electrical service come in? Um, well, I mean, there will be electrical service on the. What's the question exactly? How is electrical service coming into the property? <laughs> um, so I think we probably do. We, we do underground yeah, electric. Yeah. But it would be. I just have an underground electric line proposed, oh, but. Oh, oh, there's. Well, there's. What's your name? Douglas Bellew. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. There's. Uh, electrical service comes off of a transformer system on. Yeah. So my there's. My property now, and going in. Is it going to come off that pole? There's, yeah, there's a uh, utility pole that's in front of the property. I, I'd have to look at the existing conditions plans, but that's where I have it proposed coming off of. Um, I think it's on. No. Did you say that's off of your property? Okay. The service comes off of my property. Does it? Big pole. Electric, that's the only electricity on that side of the road. So it's got to come off of my property. You would, if it's going to go underground and go over to your property. Okay, I'd, I'd have to look the other Yeah. 
right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, underground. It's yeah. Do you know where it goes now? That, so the it, goes, it goes overhead now. It's overhead now. Oh, so okay. It goes my transformer down. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's it. So that's should be, I, I assume it's again on here somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, so it'd be an underground yeah. service. So I don't think we'd have to. And, as you may know, I, I go to all the storage companies in the valley. It's sure. my business. These guys get the nicest place in the valley, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. I mean, I go to a lot of them. It's a pretty disastrous area, storage areas. Mm -hmm. But this is a. Thank you. <laughs> they're as clean as anybody can be down there. Good to hear. Uh, electrical storage, we're just curious. So. Anybody else? Board members, um, so this gets into calculations and drainage and those kind of issues. So often we've hired someone. Yeah, yeah. To do a quick uh, peer review. Mm -hmm. They obviously have done a lot of their homework already. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't. Most of us up at the table don't need all these reports. Um, so um, I mean, don't need all the fine print. <laughs> let's say. Um, did you Mr. Chairman. In digital format too. Uh, yes, I okay. submitted them to the town. I also have yes. CDs. I brought a few with me if you guys okay. need that, but I'd be happy to send it to you. Yeah, I think yeah. she'd like oh, that. And and if you sure. want to take one for, I, I'm sure. assuming you're going to get a, an engineer to do that, so one for them too would be helpful. That's what, that's what we're talking about now. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. So just looking over yes, what I see quickly in the file here, their application does indicate an area of disturbed land of 137,303 square feet, and it does indicate a stormwater permit is required. Yep. I don't see an application for a stormwater. Did you fill out one of those too? And pay that fee as well, and I'm just not seeing it here. Yes. That's good. Because yeah, you do actually. You know, you will need to be. Yeah. Well, that's it. why I must yeah. kind of. That's why I got the big book out. Yeah. This is yeah. because of requirements. So I. Uh, so we'll go track that down the application. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess the question is, so this, how many, there's a lot of sheets here. Was there, it wasn't one that had everything on it. it sound, <laughs> well, you're saying it's I got the looking. CDs, it's got everything on it. Is no, but in no, other words, like on one it. plan. Yes. It has I, all this on it, is what you're saying. Oh, yeah, what are you asking then? Well, there was a couple items, like where the electricity is. Is there a map in here that shows where that is? That's in the utilities plan. Right. So, so the, that's in here, yeah. Yep. So I guess my suggestion is that we, we have... Um, technical assistance to run over this compared to our site plan review criteria here. Do you see anything major or is it merely going through, checking it? You can No, but again, you know, know. just hearing what they're saying and exactly. not looking at anything. So they, it sounds like it's, they've done a very thorough yeah. application. So mm -hmm. hopefully it would be a simple check to make sure that everything is here. Is there anything you think we should be looking at more carefully? Something else? The only question I had is if uh, you were going to require a peer review did, I'd want to know so I could get that going. Yeah, I think that's smart. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying, as obviously yeah. everybody has time constraints, but ours aren't as bad as the prior applicants, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> but, you know, we, we do want to yeah. try to break ground before, you know, in the, uh, ideally in September and start construction because yeah. it's a fairly complicated project and we don't want to be in the middle of it when winter hits, you know. Um, the only other thing I did want to uh, go through with the board and just uh, to make a determination if we could tonight is on the on the lighting plan. What we have is we have shown the lights placement on the plan, and John, you know exactly where those are. So they're on the layout plan, and uh, what page? It'd be um, mm -hmm. L one. L one. Here it is right there. And so what I wanted to talk with you about is that we're going to be using what are called LED zero light pollution lamps, which basically is a, I gotta call it fairly state of the art uh, uh, lighting, which essentially guarantees that there's no bleeding over the property lines onto adjacent parcels and stuff like that. Um, we do have the lighting fixtures um, 
uh, again, are going to be the, I call it kind of standard shielded lighting, so it throws the light down, down, it doesn't spill all over the place, right. uh, which is kind of becoming, you know, good, pra you know, best practices concept nowadays. But I feel we kind of have to mention it because some people still don't, aren't aware of that as being something that is useful to do. Um, but I would want to get some feel from the board because, you know, I've been in front of other boards where, uh, you know, the level of detail was significantly more than we're providing you right now. And I just wanted to see. No, just, is there a detail of the lights and the specs? I don't have a detail of the lights on the plans, but we have, uh, was it Paul Miller that's working on, he's right. actually working on a lighting plan himself, and he's going to specify the types of lights that are to be used. I didn't feel comfortable putting on my plans because it's not something that I have expertise in, but I'm familiar with the lighting and the light fixtures, so and I do, I was able to space them out, but as far as specifying what type of lights to use for the project, I left that to Paul. Okay. I think at some point that will come up as a question. Okay. And we've got, I mean, Section 4750 of our zoning bylaws is pretty pretty detailed about the height of the fixtures and, again, how much it throws off, mm -hmm. that whole thing. So as long as you stay to that, mm -hmm. you're all set. I think the, what, the idea that Paul was going to have is he was going to have a, uh, basically a cut sheet showing the light fixture what the light radius it would yeah that's right. basically that's what it spreads yeah, yeah. That along yeah. with some spec sheets is typically what you guys yeah. have in okay there. yeah so that's what we, we were going to use also did bring along just to, as a visual is, um, a picture of my client's existing facility the rear of the building at night um, uh, to show basically you had a little trouble I don't really know if you can see your property line because it's so dark by the time the light gets there. Mm -hmm. But I can at least um, have you something. Uh, yeah, these are the ones I'm more interested in. Mm -hmm. And what are the hours of operation? Did you say that? Uh, For the facility the itself, people would be used as storage facility from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, For people who have extenuating circumstances, we allow them after hours. Uh, but it's something we closely monitor. We don't want people there in the middle of the night. Um, our current facility has about 600 units, and I think we've only got five people who have after 7 o'clock access. One of them is Northwestern District Attorney. I don't think we'll have a problem with them. Uh, we've got an electrician that has a unit there. Uh, there's another attorney in Northampton who has extended hours. I'm not sure who we have two people on. Well, and do you have it? You have a. I mean, is it locked? So, is there a gate? Yes, yeah, locked. Right. So the 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 drive aisles. You need a gate code. So there's like a security. Facility. Right yeah. to get on the facility, yes. you need a, a yeah. code. So some facilities don't require a gate code to get out. You can just pull up to the gate right. and it will open. We like the added benefit of security. People have to hit a code to get in, and they also have to hit the code to get out, so we know. Right. Long Who's there? Yeah. So that's that's your that's your, those are your hours of operation too, right? I mean, anybody? Well, uh, is it open from seven to seven? Seven a.m. to seven p.m. In other words, they can't okay. access the code before then. Right. 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 So and, and what's going to be in the in the office space? How many square feet is it? It's uh, twenty four hundred square feet total, but that's two stories, so it's twelve hundred square feet. Uh, footprint area and what will be done in there basically it's going to be uh, um, office space for the operation of that particular facility so it's it's not no, there's no subtenants or anything like that it, it's simply the no you know this is this job is, is going to require four to five new employees to be hired uh, to just work out of this facility just this facility just this facility okay. um, so it's really just for them. How many units? Sorry. Our current facility or the new facility? New. Uh, it'll have approximately 300, plus or minus. And then traffic, do you yeah, give an estimate traffic. in here about um, estimated trips per day or anything? Yeah, like I actually have a chart here. Yeah, I don't think it's in any of John's materials, but um, uh, it's not as much as most people think. When you drive by most storage facilities, you'll probably see almost no cars. Yeah, no. a lot. Well, how many do you have in your current facility? 
How many do you have in the Hadley? Uh, how many units? Yes. Uh, 600. Okay, so. 600. That gives you. Right. So I guess this is information from the way, because of the, the way people have to log in and log out, this is sure. traffic volume. But again, it's for a facility that's a third larger than what we're right. proposing. And is this all the same sheet? Yep. So we just took averages. But I should say that chart there reflects uh, our first phase, which was, I think it says on the bottom, like 339. This is 337 units, and that's another operation somewhere? That's a different operation. So we just track what our average So, was so the average the looks unit. like it might be so you can somewhere see around seven or eight, nine, something like that? Yeah, I don't have a chart, but <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 The busiest day, I think it shows on there, is what? 23. It's 23. 23. And the light least day is three. Yeah, it's a fairly low traffic. I mean, certainly any restaurant would go out of business very quickly with that volume of traffic. You know. And then, did you just give us this too? Is this? Yes, he. Uh, this no, your, that. No. This is your current agreement for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, was that supposed to go to us or? Uh, uh, no, I just. Business practice. You just. Yeah, that was in the folder. But <laughs> uh, in the last meeting of the ZBA, they were concerned that we weren't allowing flammables, combustibles, and things like that. So, so this says that you know, we wanted to show that it's built into our leases because, for obvious reasons, we don't want people to have those types of things you know? on site. You know. And what do you do for fire uh, protection? Uh, we don't. Honestly, we don't. We don't have any system set up for fire protection. We don't. They didn't require a knock box. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there for about 20 years. We've never had an issue. And no fire extinguishers anywhere. Uh, we have them. In, I think three different locations in the facility, one on one side, one in the office. All the trucks have a fire extinguisher if we ever need a fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. We don't have them the mounted fires, on every right. building. Or... All right, so um, so I think the main peer review is for the uh, stormwater. Yep. Yeah, and this kind of stuff. We've had some experiences with some of our folks, so... Um, and we get two or three quotes or something, they can pick one they want, or do uh, we, how we've we done do that? before. Um, that takes time. We have an approved list. Well, I think that's what we, um, we do. It's there. We don't have to, right. So these are approved, but the question is each one might give a different price. Yeah, yeah. We let, they don't pick. We've been in trouble the last time you did that. Somebody, I somebody. You, I agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was funny. Well, Would it be possible for my client to just pick somebody from the list? And well, that's, that's what I'm just wondering. Is I, think, I think we didn't have the list before. And that's in why Vic's I, office, we did. But now we came up with the list, yeah. and if we, we think they're all just as good as the other, then the yeah. applicant can uh, Sure. Do you, you remember if that was, is that an issue other places? Uh, most places don't allow the applicant to pick. They don't necessarily have that right under law. It can be provided right. as a courtesy by your board if you wish to do that. Because it can be looked at as then then they're working for the applicant instead of working for us. They're working for the parent. Really you need to make sure that you, you know, get everything that you need. Right. And the, if the, you know, the Mr. lowest... Mr. Kalikowski is going to stand up, too. Yes, sir. I have one other question. Gary. Yep. Uh, Gary Hall. Yes, sir. Could you come up to the mic? Yeah. Well, just or speak on it. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if the mic is a big difference. But. Well, it'll help the people at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question here with the wetland area in the front. It says it's clear and fill existing isolated wetland area. So did they have permission from the DEP or Tom Yes, Tom to do this? that's addressed in the notice of intent. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to just <laughs> chime in. I know you have a system. <laughs> I'm sorry. Things won't get too out of control here tonight, so it's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. So it, uh, that's addressed in the notice of intent, but we have permission from DEP for that. And has your NOI been approved? Uh, well, that's being reviewed by CONCOM, but yeah, from what I know, we've gone okay, through so all the proper channels across. at this point. So, yes. Okay. I think there's another meeting come up at the end of the month. Yeah. So, um, which that just reminds me, they might hire a peer review for the 
water really so, right. thing. So, you know, typically you use so the same So we would just person. use the same so one. So if they've already a, initiated that process, yeah. then uh, you guys can jump on that bandwagon or vice yeah. versa. Right. Consult with them if there's something in particular that they would like. All right. So um, do we have a motion to, or well, any other questions, comments? But I think we're moving towards a continuation of the public hearing, okay. get some more input. But I think a lot of this is, so, but you've done most of the work, can so. Can we say that we, we are going to um, check with CONCOM to find out what progress they've made and to share peer review information? So can that be part of the continuation of public? Can we, if you make the motion? Okay, I'm going to make a motion. <laughs> that we continue this meeting, the, whatever it's called, public hearing. Site plan um, review public plan hearing. Review I don't know. What Again, to the 7th of August. 7th of August. Um, and we'll get a peer review, hopefully along with CONCOM. Yes. But but to, to, to your point of moving along, um, can, can we make um, it clear to CONCOM that if they don't, if they haven't made a movement toward finding a peer review um, group that we, we, we know that we find one? I, I think that if they've already, it's more in their purview to do that. But well, I think they, they tend to use a gentleman from DEP a lot, don't they? No. No, they no. use Newman Environmental Engineering a lot. One. Yeah. Newman. Okay. All but right. if DEP is involved, then they also get input from DEP. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. But all I want to know is that if we don't want to get to the seventh and find out that they haven't Enough done anything. Right, right, yeah. Right. So. Um, so, so can is we, somebody going to check into that? Can we? I will. I'll talk uh, to Steve tomorrow about all this stuff. Just talk okay. to Steve, and then, but also uh, allow the chair to take action independent from the. If we need, no, if we need a peer review. Sounds like we've got two two motions to make. Okay, here, I'll make don't, two don't motions. We? Is that not right, or all one I'm one to continue and one to give John? Okay, one to continue and one to give John. Um, Permission to seek an independent, I mean, a, a peer yeah. review, um, if indeed Concom has it. Actually, actually, I don't even think we need to make a vote to have him do it. Just we just need to vote to continue. I think is all. I don't think it hurts. Uh, yeah. To give him okay. the right. explicitly. Right. Okay. I, I, I think that. So and somebody then, second. To your point, I'll second that, both of them. By the time we see you next time, okay. we'll have this in motion, no matter whether it's us or them. It's probably worth mentioning uh, Mark Stinson from DEP is the one that's reviewing the NOI. Good. Good. That's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. Okay. I guess all the ones around here. Yeah, that, that was what I was thinking yeah, in the Mark back of my head that yes. They, yes, 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 yes. they had him, yeah. And is there... Um, and so then you might not even need it. If CONCOM says, no, we'll work with him, then you're all set. Not, yeah. not he necessarily. Works he works with DEP. They always get their own. They always get their own. Okay. Um, and, and then and there's the regulatory review. Regulatory review of all our site plan review stuff, which I would like to have the fur cog. Um, oh, should we vote on these other review. ones and then? Yeah. 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 Let's, let's vote okay. to continue. Uh, who seconded that? Uh, Ray Kipped it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That's unanimous. Okay. A vote to get the peer review? Is that the second one? Uh, I put that in the first one. Oh, okay. Is it in there? Do you Say that again. Do you okay. Well, no. Here's. I move that we um, we. I think we just pass instruct as a along to John to find a peer review if indeed the okay. Con -con right. has not Somebody's, found a peer reviewer. Somebody second John that one. Will find I did. A peer yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Five okay. And the okay, next then one. Yep, another. Zero. And I just want to check first that I think there's enough other things going on between the noise, the lights, the, that kind of thing to have Pat give, have a, Pat give one. Give yeah. a quick care. Okay. So they'll, you she'll call get that the regulatory review? Right. And yeah. she'll have to get a quote and give it to the, to well, the if gentleman? if you want me to do it as a peer review under 4453G, I'd need to do a quote. So, so you go a quote and get it to them and then? I give it to, I submit it to you and the town lets them know the amount that needs to be submitted. It's the same procedure you follow ultimately with the engineer as well once they are chosen. But it's okay. our Again, I guess I'm wondering how quickly does that take place? I mean, again, we'd like to ideally have this in front of everything.
decided, get the hire the person, get them to do the review, and have yeah. it in right. front of you by the time. In the case of the regulatory review, the good news is it just is me, so there isn't a choice to be made, and I can start, I can get and back. And she's good. Start right and and uh-huh. isn't it? We're great. we're in a sort of a um, we'll deal with interregnum that. period between contracts. We're hoping to sign that contract right away this week. In which case, I could get you an estimate mm-hmm. to the board. Um, Hopefully by the end of the week, if that contract. And we would expect that to be complete by August second, seventh, our next meeting. Right. That's that's all that's, I'm trying to do is make yeah, sure. Yeah, that'll be faster than the timing works. Than the peer review. Peer review. The uh, engineer. And again, the peer review part, if I understood correctly. So you're going to talk to Concom, to coordinate to make sure that we're all in alignment with whatever right. they're up to. Right. And then I know we did talk about, you know. Just you know, whether you would pick who that would be doing a peer review for Stormwater, or whether you just have my client pick it um, to save time on your quoting it around and stuff like that. You know, I, I'm pretty sure the con cons don't want to pick someone. If they don't, then I will talk okay. and we'll come up with someone. I guess that's kind of where I'm coming that from. We can do rather quickly. than have you try to get quotes from a number of different sources, we'll just pick somebody if you could off your list. Well, I, I, think, I think what we're saying is John will pick the right. pick the one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. In, in I, I mean, we're trying to go in that direction, though. Okay. We're, we're yeah. in the... Well, you know, we, we want the same as you. Okay. We don't want to meet any more times than you want to meet us. <laughs> that's great. We love but, that. But, but we need to be the ones that hire but them we need they're to working for us. So so you're the one that's paying them. I'm just so trying to think of so. shaving a week here. You know, I just don't want to get to that date. Now, John, did you feel you needed a third motion for the... For the for Pat, Pat or just, just do it? I think we just do it. Okay, good. Okay. As long as it's in the minutes and you've requested me to provide that. Okay. Hmm. Request Pat for a technical review. It might be worth it just because we are interregnum so regulatory. To make a for regulatory. Well, no, we're gonna, that's our next thing on the agenda is to get to Okay. Contract. Okay. Okay. Oh, Say that yeah, one more time. Regulatory and zoning review. Um, Nine o'clock. I always say I'm going to walk out at night. Actually, I think that did you guys sign that? Yeah, yeah. Because then we'll have you sign the. Uh, and if you have a card, I, yep. I'd like a card too. Liar. My food's getting cold. Okay. So we will continue this hearing until Would you like these photos back? Uh, if you have, sure. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Do you have a card? And, mm-hmm. Do you have a card? And does, does, the lawyer yeah, card. does your lawyer have a card, too? Give you my card. And oh, there he is, yeah. I'll get you John's, too. Yeah, I get to get him. Give me promise. Oh, you got both. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. Okay, all right. That's fine. Yep, okay. No problem. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right. Did you get an extra one here for John? No. Do I have one of his cards too? Excuse me? Do I have one of your cards too? Oh, sure. Yeah. You're right. He gave me these here. The disc and he'll get you one if you want. Okay, thank you. CDs, whatever. We go with them. Do you have any others? Or is this? I'm sure nobody wants a hard copy of the Stormwater Mirror or ever when nice light reading material. Right, right, right. No, I don't have Do you have another CD, John, or is this it? There is. Right there. I'm telling you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
whether the engineer can yeah. get it here rather than having again that might take some time because it's already here. You might want to put some load on. All the more reasons why I'm okay. Perfect. He did a spectacular stand out. Yeah, we're good. See his dad? Watch his dad. Watch his dad. Watch his dad. So we didn't have many uh, uh, butters here, but um, thank you for coming. A couple, and it was posted. So often, what happens is um, Doug's a big butter. it's a yeah. when there's a public hearing like this, people watch this on TV, and so then people do call us. Right. I think there's going to be a question. Um, you know, I know you're interested in this area to put this. This is a very uh, Route Five and Ten. People get worried about that becoming something other than a nice country road and it's not necessarily a nice country road right now but um have you looked at other spaces and uh, is this gonna i mean i appreciate the you talked about the building trying to fit in a little bit but you know that lighthouse building has been there for a long time Forever. so we're, we're probably going to get some questions about that mm -hmm. uh, um, they don't mind the circus across the road so uh, <laughs> <laughs> i just want to <laughs> It's going to yeah, it is. I, it, it, that, that you gonna just argue, like this. You're saying that it's a visual, you know, people, that's a landmark, it's and it's a, it's a this and that. Well, so, if I remember correctly, um, when... So, can I, but my question is just, you know, this is, you, you can say that it's an appropriate place, and... Yeah, basically, we went through all that at the uh, ZBA hearing with the whole concept, because that's really pure, pure and simple. That's a ZBA. That's their job, is to look at that sort of stuff, because what they're trying to do with the whole special permit process is to fine-tune a particular use which they've decided by special permit needs to be in a town someplace but the special permit process allows them to make sure that it winds up in the right neighborhood and that's what's important about this particular location is as you noted you know there are lots of nice open green space along Route 5 and then there's a cluster of commercial use right where this happens to be and so if you know, from the ZBA's perspective, this is the appropriate place for this use because of its neighborhood that it's in keeping with. You know? Well, I think that we also, when when this gentleman came in and asked to go at the um, Oxford property, we didn't feel it was appropriate there, and that's why he got voted down, and then said to him, go and find some other, and then we actually did the, the zoning and, and put this location out there for him. Do you remember that, John? I remember very well. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just making a statement. I'm not yeah, making well, no, I, you know, absolutely. I'm just saying that. So, so I just wanted to I know, uh, yeah. have the, uh, the, the, you know, for going forward purposes, you know, for the public to know that, yes, uh, this has been taken into consideration. And sure. part of the reason, main reason it's going to be proposed for this location is because it fits in with the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, that's from a planning point standpoint, we're looking at Route 5, look what the railroad is building across the street down there. Where they're dumping all that water on a property that, and they're changing the whole water table not There's no way you can, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. And that's an issue we have because they don't have to come to the planning they board. They don't have anything I know. to do what they're doing up there. So that's a state law we have to change. But, I don't know. Property, I don't know. Mm -hmm. With no permits, and they're dumping water on on hold. I know. Whole I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. All right. Yep. One. Oh, just uh, I was going to add to it another thing. Um, so on the opposite end of the spectrum, from an engineering standpoint, I mean, it was a difficult site to engineer. It's you know got silty soils. It has a high water table. You're never going to have a like large commercial development in there. It's yeah. not. It wouldn't work. You wouldn't be able to get the septic to yeah. work properly and you know so it's it's a limited use and yeah. I think that this particular project fits nicely with um, you know what we can do with it yeah. it's my unbiased perspective <laughs> 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 just put it out there all right thanks very much so uh, we'll so either Pat might call you directly or um, yep. but we'll can let we you know with the con call. Great. Great. all right thank you thank, thank, thank you very much thank you yep. thank you so much all right, we're not finished yet at the planning board. We know that. Oh, and it's only 9.30. We, we still have another hour and a half to go. Back to our uh, late nights, yeah.
<laughs> All right, but Paul, look at this. I did a nice. We got everybody's names. There you go. There you go. Do you need this, or yeah. I, I, I think I got what I need uh, as it went along. And the, the people that came from the public, that's something I think that's on that sheet. Oh, this this doesn't have Doug and Gary's name. Doug and who? I got Gary. them here. You got Doug and Gary? Okay. Yeah, Doug Douglas Bulldo and Gary Kalikowski. Can I take that CD and then I'll get it back to you? Thank you. And I Just have curious. one, and he said he's going to drop off a packet for he's the gonna, engineer oh, with stamp plans and, and another some other CD in the next couple of days. Yeah, he said he'd drop off some more CDs as well. Can you, uh, where's the file on these guys? Uh, it's the right other there. one. This is for that one. Okay. Why don't you just go in there? That goes in that file, Paul. Okay, in this file yeah. here? That's for the storage place? Yeah. All right, and then, um, so we have one of those. One of what? Oh, there's right Once here, you yeah. The, oh, you're taking the disc yourself I'll now, take this yeah. disc and then get it back. But the, I, I took one. If you need, but they've got some more. No, 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 he's got more. I didn't want to well, They've got more over there, there to leave here. All right, next up is our agreement, uh, the FERCOG, Agreement for Provision of Services. Okay, I'll make sure that I don't use the schedule less than notes. Sometimes it's in my other items folder here. And again, it's called agreement. It's a memorandum of agreement for services. For services. Between the town of Deerfield and the FERCOG. It was dated July 12th, and it says, uh, please find final, oh, it's a final injury. July 12th. I gotta get my head back in the game. Memorandum of agreement, memorandum of agreement for services by between the town of Deerfield and the Regional Council of Governments. You want to hit the highlights for us, Pat? It's a, um, basically, it's this as, is uh, similar to the memorandums of agreement we've had for previous years. The uh, maximum amount, these are typically written that it's up to an amount. So this is the same $15,000 that we started with last year. We ended up amending that yeah. at the end of the year because we had done so many peer reviews right. that it went over that. But much of that money was the yeah. reimbursed to the town. It was not town funds that were expended. Mm -hmm. um, so we're sticking with the 15000 And if things get wicked busy this year like they did last year, that, that So you're leaving one of those for an engineer? Uh, or are you going to? Get okay, so good. Thank you. No yeah, problem. Well, gotcha. Back. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Okay, yeah. sorry about that, Pat. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so if you look at attachment A, we've made a few adjustments to the scope of services. One thing realized in going through it is it never mentioned stormwater permits anywhere, and we do a lot of those now, including one that we're talking about tonight. So uh, the tasks have been adjusted to uh, task one now refers to site plan review, special permits, special permit applications where you have authority for those. Task two is um, technical assistance on uh, applications under subdivision regulations. So that would be like what we did to the condominiums at Sugarloaf or A&R. So those come in under those regulations mm -hmm. as well. And um, it's divided between general reviews and technical assistance reviews. So task three is the peer reviews. Task four continues to be general consulting services to the, anyone in town, planning board, town administrator, building commissioner, administrative staff. I talk with the town clerk and whomever else you know we need to chat with in order to make things happen. So um, and those those same changes in the tasks have been reviewed, uh, reflected in the proposed budget at the end. And then there's mm -hmm. attachment B, which is the town of Deerfield scope of services. These haven't changed. I did threaten to put in a clause about a uh, late meeting. And I didn't <laughs> do it yet. So I'm, still, I'm looking at the clock. Going. After 11? No, just I, I just like collapse <laughs> oh, after okay. 9.30. Uh-oh. Yeah, 9.31. 9.31. So, um, yeah. So I, I just, just you know, I, I think Keep this was, mind. this agenda was much better handled and everything went much better better tonight than sure. those nights when, you know, things got out of hand with four yeah. different public hearings on there. Uh, you know, I'm, uh -huh. I can't do that. I can't get home <laughs> after midnight and get up the next morning and be at an early morning meeting, which I have to do every first, second, first Tuesday of the month. So I have this oh, year guys late God. first Monday and an early morning meeting first Tuesday. Mm -hmm. so. so this is good. It's glad to see we had a busy meeting and then we're getting through it. So yep. I didn't okay. know that. 
So um, I propose we uh, we ask this we we ask the select board to sign this memorandum agreement. Uh, I, I, do we have to make a motion? I um, don't. Just say. I think it would help them yeah. to yeah. have okay. a formal vote of the board. I, I did uh, I did copy I copy everybody on my things now. So the town uh, administrator was copied on that email that went to you, John. As was the um, town accountant, because they process all of these materials. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. I did hear back from Wendy that she actually put it on the board of selectmen's agenda for Good. Wednesday already. Good. So I move that we we. Uh, we ask the select board. Ask the select board to sign the agreement that presented, as presented. I'll second that. Discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? I'll sign that. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? <laughs> Five zero zero. Thank you, Kip. And no problem. Just to, just to let you know, I, I approved uh, the last payment for last fiscal year of $622.34. Prior so to this meeting. Okay. So that should be and that included right. overtime for this meeting, didn't it? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, and then the I'm, doing this, one, I'm doing this one on spec. <laughs> oh, you guys. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like I still have the extension, but that's been taken care of. That is all taken care yeah, of yeah. now. Yeah, so okay, good. And the FERCOG would also like us to make sure we nominate another um, uh, representative to the Franklin Regional Planning Board. Well, John Baronis just, has been it. Do we want yeah. to continue him? He loves those meetings. All right, check. Okay. I mean, let's somebody else, else he's not here. If anybody else wants it, it's, it's available. Let's let's vote Roger. <laughs> for Roger. Good night. I, I, I know. John loves it. He's so good there. That's perfect. All right. So that's good. That's good. Um, other item is. Oh, <sighs> so anything else with the fur code? No. No. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I don't know anything really about housing. I just want to. We just have to do something. Select board's kind of working on it. On what? Senior housing. What about it? That do the old. I think uh, it's a long nothing discussion. about it. It's just it's a long discussion. I we, think we just we should we just want to keep it on our radar. It's okay. a good idea. Yes, good. <laughs> and then resurfacing. Any updates? I have a letter here. Um, I, I was going to go and talk to Wendy today. I forgot. Sorry, yeah. I didn't actually forget. I Every time I drive across that bridge, I keep wondering why they're not going to do that bridge. It's all patched Which together bridge? now. Yeah. They're, they're going to skip over the bridge that crosses 91, and that's all patched with cement. And, that's because and it's not in Deerfield. What? Well, anyway, the, no, the no, thing, it's going to go up yeah, to the bridge. It's going to stop at the bridge, yeah. and then it's going to start at the after the bridge and go on up 5 and 10. Right, right. So they deliberately are skipping over the bridges. Yeah, so, yeah, anyway, yeah. so our main thing was that Elm Street and Route 5 and 10 and intersection. I just gotta and get Rachel in. was at a meeting. I know. You know I was at a meeting. Well, I can't give you that much of an update because... It really wasn't about that intersection so much, but they're going to look at that again um, because of the foot traffic. They want to make sure that, you know, they're thinking about putting foot tra traffic well, on both sides of that that intersection. And because aren't they going to put turnings lanes into the new Cumberland Farms and all yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Cumberland's going to do that. Yeah, Cumberland's in charge of that. But we're do they have to pay for it or do they have to do it? the foot traffic from one side of the, the street to the other. So there's already an existing um, crossing. Cross yeah. Do they make it on both sides? So they're oh. going to evaluate that. Okay. Um, and then they just talked about rumble. We talked about rumble strips. Oh. Oh. Okay. On, not on the center line, but on the sidelines relative to the bike uh, bike paths. Oh wow! And good. And then they're going. But they're to not going to be in the bike path, right? What's that? <laughs> I say they're not going to be in the bike they, path, right? They kind of are in the bike path, but uh -oh. that's you know what. I wondered about Ask that. Ask bikers. Doug, Doug left. He could tell you. It's a pain. But and that's not a very frequently trafficked bike path part. part if you're smart, you don't drive exactly that. Exactly. That. And the recreational bikers try to avoid that part. But anyway, it's going to be there, and that the rumble strips seem to be a very good idea. The other thing, though, that uh, Chief Pachorek put on, and this was relative to some concerns that we talked about before when I was we were talking about Sugarloaf. Remember, he said there are other places that have high concern for him, and one of them is that left turn in front of your place to the schools. That that turn oh, yes, is a yes. terrible, terrible uh, turn right, right, right. twice, a, twice yeah. a day. I terrible haven't seen turn. them lately. I've, I always got interested well, that's because when the they put a out. cop there and they stop car after car after car for not stopping at the stop sign there. Well, that's, no, I'm Coming, talking about the left-hand turn into, into. Well, yeah, but you turn, you turn down, down Conway Street 
and then what's that other street that goes across yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a stop sign there, yeah, and yeah, when people yeah. pick up their kids at school, yeah. they cross the track, yeah, no, I know. come over, well, and don't ever stop at right. that intersection. No, I know. So he has a lot of concerns in that area, so they're going to look at that again. Oh, yeah. He has a, he, he, he's, he uh, expressed concern over that particular They stopped term. the school bus one year. The guy suggested a, a, a rotary. <laughs> to which I, oh, I was boy. like, uh -huh. oh, I started laughing, fine. and he said, are you laughing like you think it's a good idea, or are you laughing like you think it's a bad idea? And I a said, rotary. I'm just laughing nervously. Yes. A round, roundabout. A roundabout. A roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Just to oh slow people goodness. down. Can you like imagine? So anyway, I, I, you every time you, I drive by How can you slow people down well, when you're well, like speeding 50 down. miles an hour all through there? I mean, that's, well, that's and a that's bit. what that's what Chief Petrarch was kind of pointing out. That's why it's it's just there's just a lot of challenges to that particular area. That's mm. Georgia Road. Well, it was the short sightedness of putting the grammar school where it is because we own the land that is kind of driving all of that. Right. Wow, we're stuck with it. Well, the proximity of the elementary school to the big, the high school yeah. is not terrible. All right. Okay. I'm looking at mail, it's all... And it's we did set the next meeting as August the 7th, so that's done. Special permits from other towns is what most of the mail is about. Are you, are you cutting out on this? Anybody can you look at them. While well, you're looking at that... That was the seat? I, don't, oh, I think that we might have skipped over the fact that we need to appoint the chair. I wondered if we had done that the last time. Done what? I don't think that we did. We didn't do what? Appoint the, the chair. Of our board? Yeah. Oh, vote on, oh, on yeah. We yeah. usually do that after elections in May, so yeah. we didn't do it. Let's, let's do it. So who, uh, who wants to be the chair? I, I want you to be the chair, so I nominate you. I'll second that. Oh. We're seconding what? I didn't hear it. I nominate John to be chair of the board. Okay. And I second it. All right. You seconded it. So now we're legal. Okay. So now you want to call for a vote? All those opposed. <laughs> <laughs> And you still want to have a vice chair and, and everything? Yes. Okay. You still want to be, want vice, to be chair, vice chair or is that sure. coming? Oh. Yeah. There's not much to do. So no, there isn't. I think uh, the clerk is actually in the position that there's more to do. Yeah. That, yeah. How are you feeling about, about yeah, that? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll I nominate there. Paul as clerk. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else second? I will. Okay. And, and, uh, Everybody vote? John's our rep on this. Yeah. What are you the rep on? Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a rep to that little stretch of five and ten. <laughs> They're actually CPA. Was one of She's CPA. I'm yeah, a CPA. I'm a CPA. CPA. Yeah, all right, because okay. there might be more action. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that might have to do with senior housing and other things. So you, that yes. might be a more active position. Uh, it is, but you know, it has a season. The CPA has a season. I would say that I <laughs> I feel a little overwhelmed sometimes with the agenda. Um, I get a lot of pressure the few days before it needs to be posted and. Um, the town just sent out a thing and the, the regulations about posting and what we can do and I, I hope you read my response Paul was I didn't read I'm sorry so instead of waiting to the few days before to post it is right after this meeting we now know we're gonna have these two continuations on our next meeting right so we could actually get that on there and post it yes and then if we need to make changes before then change it as hours, we what we can change it but at least that way we don't yeah, worry sure. about it that sounds good. Yeah. good sounds good and so I asked for Pris Priscilla about that and if you so Paul if you could get her Okay. Like I will talk. Within to a few her. days after our meetings, yeah. let her know these are what we expect. Okay, I will. Sometimes yeah. we have nothing, but now sometimes we know what we're gonna have, and that's okay. actually good for the public to know right. too. And you could just add so, things later yeah. as needed, but it gets more notice, well, which is always better. The select board and the um, sewer study committee do that. Yeah, okay. smart guys. Okay. And then I do not take, you know, sometimes I get phone calls from applicants because Priscilla yeah. didn't know the answer she sends to me. I usually don't do much with those. I try to return them, but um. I'd rather have people come and talk to all of us. Yes. I'm not. I don't yeah. know any more I than totally anybody agree. else. So I, I don't think want to that's get. Actually, and if I say something wrong, it gets in trouble. I think so. that's a good. Policy. I'm just gonna. I'm just that's gonna that's put down here that we elected John Chair, John Wait Chair, Kip Vice Chair, Paul Clerk, John B. for Cog, Rachel CPA. Just that we voted it. That's all. I'm not gonna. Good. Is that okay? Yep. Wait a minute. Right. No. <laughs> I'm gonna take that back. I'm on the CPA, not from this board. I'm the select board. Do you know that? Well, you to take it I'm off? the select board representative to yes. the CPA. Roger is the oh, Roger right, is right. the uh, our planning board representative. Um, you want to put down Roger the then? CPA. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Forgot that. And Roger did tell call me today. Actually, he called me over the weekend and called me again today, saying he, he he offers his apologies, but these are the tough nights to get here. The 
second Mondays. Yeah. He's got another meeting. Remember, he even told us that. He told us that. So. So. Yeah, okay. All right, so Rogers, if you. And John what? said he was going to be out of town this, this week. Okay, and it good. wasn't in the paper. I Saturday. don't want to make this a long discussion, but I, I do want to talk to this board about it. Is the, the situation happened with these people from Two Feathers, seeing how you know, they went to one board and to another I board, know. then they get misdirected. Let's see if we can think of a way to try and straighten that out. Yep, yep, um, yep, 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 you know, yep. it, it seems like it happens more often. And, these poor people, you know, they're really confused. They come in and they get misdirection from different offices within town hall. And I'm, I'm going to bring it up Wednesday at our select board meeting. We really need to work. Well, and I'm not, when I say we, I don't mean this board. I just mean right. the town yeah. needs to have something. So when people get information, it's correct, and they go to the right people the first time. I right. thought we had a flow chart that was going to take care of that. Did we or well, not? No. There are multiple flow charts for the various... Yeah. particular permits but Not there needs the to be process. the central authority yes. who reviews the materials and yes. determines what permits are required in each of these cases they need to review for zoning appropriateness right see if it's allowed if the proposed use is allowed where it's where it is being proposed you need to look at all the various permits that would be required and well, set up a list of the order in which it should happen. Yeah, yeah, Typically, that would happen within the building commissioner's office. Well, one of the things that we have discussed, not to a full extent, is to hire a town planner. And yeah. this person could do all of this, you know, and, and, and get it together. Yeah, you know, they, they wouldn't replace the planning board, but they would be in charge of this type of thing. So when people come in, right. they can they speak right. to someone who knows all of the ins and outs and, and what needs to get done and what boards. And that one person could disseminate the material to the appropriate boards so everybody gets and even help do some scheduling and stuff. I, mean, I think, yeah, right, I think we, the building commissioner we, has, so, you know, being the, the board of health agent and so forth, I think there's, I think there's so much work that's assigned to that Position that right. you know they would need an additional person, how whichever office they were attached to, to assist in that. And historically, the town has always tried to manage things with minimal personnel, and it's it's always either cost the town, um, you know, money, or it is cost applicants time and money. You know, it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I why did we give up our planning board clerk? I don't necessarily know if we gave it up or if it just... We just were told we are being streamlined. Yeah. We gave you know, it. I've been working yeah. with you guys for almost 10 years now, and, and there's been a lot of changes over time and, you know, various administrative structures that have been put in place and then yeah. altered, you know, and it's worked better sometimes than others. And right now we're in a particular transition phase that I think has been defunct. Yeah. Well, we've gone from yeah. someone to nobody in charge. In the, uh, in the town hall. Relative to us, you're talking about the town, the town manager position now. No, no. we had a clerk, okay. and Bernie came to us and said, "You're going to lose the clerk. We're streamlining." Right. And, and we had a, we had a tough time yeah. with one of them that was here. But it was okay. But we had her. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of dedicated. Yeah, it was the idea that yeah. dedicated a person. Yeah. 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 With a name, not yeah. a yeah. position. So Absolutely. This is a good I think so I think we encourage this like board. board. I think. To, I think that's yeah. good. It's I like that. Two, two yeah. tier. One is planning board, and one could just be a yep. um, like a that. person who's the administrative person. And right I think, time for us. And I think over the past year, with these more complicated projects, you see more of a need. Sure. And oh it's yeah. And so. it's good yeah. move. You know, it's good movement. It's uh, like, yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. I I move that. Anything else? Sure. Okay. Second. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 August 7th, 7th o'clock. This, this is a night for me to at, make uh, a difference.